disturbing fucking thing I've seen in a long time, he said, dude. He said, Are you ready for this? edition of KFC Radio on the Barstool Sports Network. We got Johnny at home, me in the office. We're testing out Skype or uh, Zoom to make sure that John's internet can handle it for our live show tomorrow night, which you will be able to uh, watch. It'll be like a replay, right? You can rewatch it? Yeah. 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 So, you know, available right now. The KFC Radio presents a very Barstool Christmas special is out right now. So when you're done listening to this podcast, you can go watch our Christmas special. But at the last minute, we did an interview from John's apartment, and he and his internet cut out halfway through it. I was like, oh, fuck. We didn't even test your internet yet. So we're doing that right now. I, Ho- I, hopefully it holds up. I did a speed test yesterday. It, it should hold up, uh, but that made me very nervous during yeah. that interview. Yeah. So we'll see if it's got the legs. <laughs> the, also, Nick, though, we should just, like, bring that. They have, they have an extra Wi-Fi at the office. Like, just Loaded bring that up. mobile hotspot. Yeah. I, it, like, I plan on some confusion to that. We're going to need all the backup we can get. Uh, John's also at his apartment right now because he participated in what I'm going to assume was your first ever sexy pinup calendar shoot. Uh, yeah, probably, probably. sexy pinup. Yeah, I, I've done a, I've done a little light modeling back in the day. Kevin. Oh shit! It, it was literally one time, and the reason they had me do it is because my hotter friend couldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like. It was like, oh wait, John's with you too, right? And they were like, yeah, like, does he want to come do it? It was like, uh, like I did it. At, I did it. I was part of a fashion show. Or, um, fuck, it was at the Tennis Hall of Fame in Newport, <laughs> and uh, it was. I can't remember that you would know the the clothing brand if you saw it because it's mm. like what like the girls wear that it just like looks ridiculous. Like, like I feel like like girls have like a big overnight bag by this brand. Lily this, uh, Lily Pulitzer. That's exactly yep, what it was. Yep. Yeah, it is. When that when that got popular, uh, I want to say like 2010-ish, because I remember going to the Hamptons around then when every girl had the bags and the bathing suits. I was like, these are fucking disgusting. This looks like what like your 65-year-old grandma would would want. And all like the young hot girls were rocking it. It was ridiculous. And I, I was in a I I walked in a fashion show for them with Ms. Rhode Island. Hey, and because they don't really make men's clothes, so it was just I was a gonna tie. say, what well, yeah, tie, yeah. I had to I had to get all my own other my own other clothes. Um, but that's my my one brief foray. Into well, like well, now, week. now you can add another one to the resume. Let me tell you something. It the the picture I got. John sexted me. John sexted me a photo, folks. And his words were, he said, "Obscene." I mean, it was obscene. You're right. You're right. It, it was obscene. Obscene, and it doesn't even. It doesn't even scratch the surface of how obscene it got. Oh like, God, were you like, were you fully nude? No, no, no. Okay, no. okay. That's a, little, that's a little inside baseball. I had these shorts on, just like rolled up. Okay. Like oh, look how pale those thighs were. Those things were out. <laughs> those things were out for the world to see. Yuck. But the the people taking the pictures, I'm not going to say who it was. It wasn't. The folks taking the pictures were like, I mean, I don't want to put words in their mouths, cumming themselves. They were like, they were like, oh, my God, you are such a natural – this is actually kind of sexy. Like this is good. They want. There was a whole artistic vision behind it. It wanted to look like I overdosed in the tub on Sour Patch Kids, so I was doing like rock star poses. Uh-huh. And, and it was it was really hard to take myself seriously. But they were doing a real good job. I was gonna say. I was gonna say you were laughing at yourself, but you were getting your machine gun Kelly on. You were like you were you were posing. You were getting you were getting uh, getting passionate about it. I can tell. I know what you were doing. Yeah. Me, like, how to angle my head back as I like. Uh, bit into like, it, yeah, yeah buddy. Pulled it apart so it hit like it, like stretched and stuff. It I was, mean, uh, there were a few times I threw like, I think I'm making a sexy face. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, originally supposed to be a part of it, and then this week for me, uh, I'm 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 suffering what every uh, other American family suffered the first part of the pandemic. I remember talking about like, oh, yeah, it sucks because you got to be a full time parent and a full time worker. But I was lucky enough that my nanny was like gravy the whole time. So I never really had any problems. This is the first week now. My nanny's not able to watch the kids. So we're doing both. Uh, It's fucking impossible. 
Like, I don't know. I, I know people were making a big stink about it. They weren't making a big enough stink. It's it's insanity. It's nuts trying to do both. It's My, my days are just packed, jam-packed front to back. So I was able to use that as an excuse. But when I told Liz, I was like, listen, I'm straight up, I, I don't have the time. But also, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I was like, everybody else is going to have fun doing this. And my toxic-ass fan base is going to, like, mercilessly make fun of me. And it's and I'm going to be insecure about it. And I'm going to hate it. So I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> the whole I mean, time, I was like, okay, I'll do it. And then I was like, wow, this is really happening. I guess I'll do it. And then she really was like, okay, it's time to schedule it. I was like, fuck, I guess I have to do this. And I was like, no. No, I do not. I'm not doing this. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> So you'll get John's sexy pose and and a, and a bunch others, uh, and that'll be out soon. Also, forget about that calendar. This is the only calendar you need right here. On sale right now, the KFC Radio quote and uh, question calendar of the day, 2021 calendar. There's also a maze in there. With an, oh, yeah. Yeah. What, 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 what's the, just a, just a <laughs> national babysitter's day. There's a maze. National babysitter's day is a maze. You got to escape from. That's funny. Um, we've got, oh, there it is. Uh, we've got, yeah. Help fights babysitter escape the basement. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's 2021 calendar where on the front is a, uh, is a one thing I learned cartoon picture of both of us. And it's got all of our best out of context quotes, a lot of These our best like, answer the internet questions uh, all throughout the year. I was nervous about this because sometimes you think something's a great idea and then it just kind of flops, doesn't yeah, work that yeah. well or whatever. Yeah. And then we had a bunch in the office, and there were just like eight people sitting around, just laughing, all reading on their own, laughing out loud, being like, "Oh, look at this one!" Well, look at this one. The show is funny, but out of context, it's fucking outrageous. And even like <laughs> you know, just think about how you start your day, right? You know, they say to like start your day making your bed so you've accomplished something. I say start your day off with a laugh. So you wake up, you roll over. It's August 3rd and you pop open, you wipe your eyes, you look at it. What would you trade a three-year-old baby for? Let's go. <laughs> You're starting your day on a high. Uh, uh, or, you know, August 4th, self-cleaning vaginas. The vagina cleans itself? When does it happen? Do you have two periods a month? Is it like this is my cleaning period and this is my baby period? Boy, if you miss one of those from fights. <laughs> I mean, geez, these things out of context are just absolutely spectacular. Uh, and so if you're a fan, you probably remember some of these quotes. If, you know, if not, um, you know, sure. August 27th. Homeless woman just puked right at my feet on 7th Avenue. She let out an audible gag and a spit and spit a mouthful of pea soup puke right on the sidewalk. I started laughing, and the guy next to me just said, Gotta love NYC. I said, <laughs> Concrete jungle where, where, all, where dreams are made of, and all three of us went about our day. You starting your day on highs like this? You starting your day on out of context, moments, questions, comments? That, that's from, a nice one, too, because it's just like, hey, I, the worst thing that happens to you today it's not going to be that bad. Like, yeah, not, not as bad as this. March 29th, John Feidelberg on confidence. I've only gone skinny dipping once in my life. And she just didn't hook up with me afterwards. <laughs> just a lot of great, like, you know, Confucius quotes and, and fortune cookie quotes and questions. So uh, available at the Barstool Sports Store right now. You can go order the uh, 2021 quote calendar of the year. Um, it's brought to you by 3 Chi. We are basically biochemists and scientists as far as I'm concerned. Never. I, honestly, I don't even want a we. Because that wasn't my idea. That's that's a Kevin Kevin well, Clancy original. You know, thing. I I'm I'm flattered and I'm honored. But we workshopped that here in this spot. We talked about this this idea, and so we all get credit here. It's you know it's a team effort, teamwork to make the dream work. But never have I felt more vindicated than with my doming idea. Now, if you if you're a listener of the podcast, we we are. Uh, proponents of doming for all disasters and all problems. You've got a wildfire that we can't seem to put out. That's where it started was the wildfires because it blows my mind that in the year of our Lord, 2020, we can't put out fires. And I know they're big and I know they're hot, but I figure, you know, we know how to put out fires, water, oxygen. We could do it. Can't do it though. So I said, why don't we just get a fucking giant dome, pick it up with some helicopters, fly it over the fire, drop it over, snuff it out. And then we thought about, you know, we could drop it over uh, hurricanes. We could drop it over cities that need protection. We could drop it over all sorts of shit. 
And some people laughed. Some snobs laughed. Most people yeah, went. Some people, some people thought it was a joke. Some it people was, thought we were joking. And then you know what a lot of people did, though? A lot of people went like this. Huh. You know. Not the worst idea not heard. the worst idea. And so it this. Was, it was like almost Trump-esque when, when Trump uh, asked about hurricanes. He's like, what if we nuked him? And, and like, it's ridiculous, but have we tried it? Have you seen the gentleman in, I want to say West Virginia, but I might be saying that because I just said that a minute ago in conversation. He created a, a weather gun, a weather cannon. This was in Jersey. Kevin. Jersey, even better. Yeah. That's right nearby. This guy created this cannon from like homemade scrap metal that would blast these rings, it looked like smoke rings. It looked like if you're puffing a cigar or a blunt and you blow smoke rings, but gigantic, that he would blast at clouds in the sky and that would break them apart. This guy can control the weather, apparently. Making, you know, and, and, and with like, like I said, scrap metal off the heap. Imagine if you get like, you know, a real laboratory and real minds behind it. This guy apparently created a, a, a weather cannon and I don't know if it's real or not, but I watched him fire that thing off, and I was like, you know, it's worth the it's worth looking into. As is doming, which is actually that that one in particular um, upset me because it's like it's an idea I should have had because I had a gun like this as a kid, and I, I feel like a lot of people did. It was like this almost a megaphone looking thing, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you pulled the back, and it had like a kind of like bungee cords maybe, mm -hmm. and you pull back. And it would, it had all like a, a plastic wrap that came with it. Mm -hmm. And then you just let it go and it just shot bursts of air. To yes. People's faces. Yes. And I'll tell you what, that would get a person to leave the room pretty quick. Real fucking fast. So it makes sense that it would apply as well to clouds and things of that nature. Uh, I mean, you know, clouds, they seem like they're easy enough to break up. You know, just puff. If you <sighs> we blow hard enough, it's probably going to go away. So a puff of I air. Room. Yeah. So uh, if, if, Weather cannons can be a thing. And so maybe two can doming. And this TikTok goes viral with this kid uh, who's showing these schematics behind him and says, if you Google Operation Total Enclosure at the beginning of the pandemic, the United States was considering putting a gigantic dome over the United States of America. I now, mean obviously, they didn't do it. Maybe we should have because, uh, you know, they probably said, we don't need to put the dome over. We'll just ask people to wear surgical masks over their face, and that'll take care of it. And nobody fucking did that, so maybe we should have done doming, but it was most certainly on the table, and I guarantee it would have worked better than the fucking approach we took this way. So doming is very real and very possible. I, I think here's the thing, though. Here's I, I think that this doming situation is a little too big. Right? Yeah. Because, like we talked about with America, where it's, it's, it's just too big. Because I think if they put a dome on around America to start this pandemic, when they lifted that dome, every other country would have been like, what? Put it back on. Put it back yeah. on. But it would have been chaos in here. It would have been <laughs> fucking anarchy in the street. Lord think of the Flies masks. type shit. Think about people, how people responded to just being asked to wear a mask. Right. Fucking lose, like uh -huh. losing their mind. If it was just like, hey, just so you guys know, you're all on house arrest. I mean, it's an entire country's worth of house arrest, but you're under house arrest. People well, like, this you know is what? Tyranny. You're taking my freedom. Yeah, well, China essentially they didn't do one giant giant dome. They just did individual domes. They just domed everybody's house and just yeah. sealed you up. And everyone's yeah. like, oh, how come they can have like rave parties in Wuhan? It's like, well, because they were literally welded into their apartments for six months. So I don't think that would have gone well when, once again, we couldn't even ask you to wear a mask. So they went. It almost would have been like, like uh, in like the movies. It's like when they turn on the light in like a cockroach infested room and like everything starts scattering. Yeah. If it turned on the light by taking off the dome. And like, put it back on, put it back on. Never mind, fuck this. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, 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 I think we should, you're right, it's too big, but if they were just like, all right, New York's getting domed, like the hot spots were getting domed. Leave like the right. middle of the country off, whatever. Uh, you know, most people were kind of staying put anyway. Give them, a, give them a deadline. You get out at a certain time, and then otherwise you're just under the dome for the next six weeks or whatever. I've, yeah, that, well, that's all you ever need is you just need a light at the end of the tunnel. You're like, look, yeah. we're domed for six weeks. Okay, fine. We doming, baby. We be doming. Uh, it's a great idea. I also, um, 
another great idea is uh, is this Jake Paul, Conor McGregor pay per view. I think people need to understand something that you don't need to like everything or everybody in life for something to exist or thrive or happen. Like you don't have to like Jake Paul to want to like, you should still want to see this pay-per-view happen. You know, yeah. like people, like, you should, if you don't like Jake Paul, you should want to see it even more. That's what I'm saying. Like you don't, people are saying, why do we give this guy attention? Why are we even saying his name? And it's like, cause it's fucking awesome. It's, I don't like him. I'm not rooting for him, but it's awesome that this is happening and he's the heel and, and playing the villain to make it happen. So you can, um, you can like support someone without supporting someone, you know, right, you don't right. have to, you don't have to want him to like fail, uh, to, to not, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not articulating it, but it's like, I think he's an asshole. But the world needs assholes. Not everyone can be a face. Not everyone can be a hero. Not everyone can be the good guy. The world needs bad guys too. And right now, he's the greatest bad guy in the world. It's like your favorite villain in wrestling, except it's real life, and he's actually just that big of an asshole. And also, if you objectively look at both Logan Paul and Floyd and Jake Paul and potentially Connor, the two people being made to be villains in both of these stories aren't really the villains. Bro! The other, uh, the other it's insanity. Like, kind of like, like they've both been stupid 20 year olds. Yeah. I, I think Logan has done a complete turnaround. And I think he's like a very interesting, cool guy now. Yes. Jake hasn't swayed me, but I mean, I haven't spoke, spoken to Jake. Like I'm yes. pretty friendly with Logan now. So right. obviously I'm quite biased. Um, but the, the other two are bad have like, people. like been to court for abusing people. Yes. Like beating and like i mean connor not i, I don't think connor there's, been a, there's been a lot of accusations yeah yeah but and, like and we saw like, the video of the old men in the bar that's why that that jake paul shit talking video like took a couple shots in the beginning that we we're like this, this is good uh, i'll be honest also that one i i didn't care i think i think yeah. a punch in a bar is like that's fair game yeah yeah it, it was it was just like a little fucking it was more of a snuff than a punch. Yeah. And it was just like, look, if you're at a bar talking shit, you might get snuffed that, once. That happens at that bar to that guy probably like six or seven times a week, you know? Like, right. Oh, Johnny got punched again. Like, yeah, whatever, man. People were mad because the guy had gray hair. But, like, I don't know. I, I imagine that dude's taking a couple of fucking punches. And, like, and probably deserved it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah, I, the uh, – you know, I, I, told, I told Bob Fox that Logan Paul is my Dana White to him. You know, like I just, I just want to talk to Logan. I'm a fan of Logan. I'm, I'm open about my bias, and I want him to succeed. The same way that Bob Fox, like, just loves Dana White, and and he's not there to like press him or whatever. And and Bob was like, ooh, like really, yuck, like no thanks. Like I will be rooting for Floyd in that fight. I'm like, are you fucking serious, man? Like a guy who's like beat his wife before and is like a noted piece of shit because you just don't like the like the cocky YouTube kid. And, right. and, and 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 Jake, I understand more. I think if you don't like Logan, you are just a, a true. You either a like don't know like the full story, which a lot of people don't, and b you're just like a true hater. It's just like you don't like that a a kid much younger than you has a lot more money than you and a lot more success. And I think that bleeds in to like you your personal bias and your personal feelings. Jake, I think you have more of a leg to stand on because he just always presents himself as a total asshole. But to be like, we just, you know, like, stop giving him attention. It's like, no, give him attention because this shit, the shit that comes of it is awesome. It's it's entertaining right. and you don't have to root for him to win. I guess if you have a, I don't mind that he's going to get rich off of this. That doesn't bother me. It's just, you know. Because I, guess what? He's already rich. Right. And like, yeah. We yeah he will make money. but The horse is out of the barn. We should have stopped it, you know, years ago. But it's too late now, so we might as well fucking enjoy the, the pay-per-view that he could potentially put on. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And but I also don't really fault people who have their made mind made up about someone and is just like, you know what, I fucking hate that person now. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, when and people like, say like do I, research or like I said, you don't know the full story. It's like I'm, I don't want to know the full story. I'm not going to take the time to get the full story. You know. But right, I right. also I've, I've done that. I do personally It'd be hypocritical of me to thumb my nose at that. Yes, but I also do have a soft spot just for, for people like that. Cause I, I fall into that category where there's a million people who know one thing about me, make their judgment. Right. And I'm like, well, 
I'd like you to either get to know everything else about me or find out more about that situation. But I know you're not going to, but so be it. But for someone like Logan, it's like, I, 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 I feel like it's, you know, a, a similarities there where it's like he went through the fire, like humbled and learned and all this shit. And now is, is different. And I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, let's, let's all give people like that a chance, but I don't expect <laughs> many people to do it, but I just personally have the, the, uh, the, the, the personal like bias and soft spot for it. But I also don't get like, I hate people without, there's a difference between hating someone and like, and hating, like you diff like, like not wanting them to succeed. You know what I mean? Not, it's like, if you, if you can, if you can gain a following and I don't like you, but like, whatever, he's doing it. Like uh, on the internet, yeah. there's no, if, if he was like the son of somebody and he was handed this thing, like he just built this, he just did it. And that drives you crazy. And, and you know, it drives me crazy on some level, like where I'm like, fuck, why not me? But not to the point that I'm like, you know, he shouldn't get this or he doesn't deserve this. Yeah, I, I think like everyone, like I, I, I'm never really like calling for someone to not be able to earn a living. I'm just like, ah, fuck that person. Yes. And, it, and and then, and honestly, if you press me on it, I probably don't even hate anybody in the world. Right. Well, except for genuinely bad people. But like yeah. celebrities who annoy me, if you were like, well, like, you know, they're actually a pretty good deal. I'm like, you know what? Probably. Like, yeah, it's, sure. It's, like, <laughs> yeah. Like the amount of people, though, that just get pressed. The homies were pressed over this Jake Paul video. And it's like, you can say he's an asshole and want him to get his ass kicked, but that doesn't mean that, like, I don't want to see the Conor McGregor fight. Like, let's fucking go. Which, by the way, just has to happen now. Like, I think it was inevitable anyway. You call somebody's girl a four out of ten. It's just gotta happen. I mean, <laughs> I, I didn't I don't think I knew that. John, I, John, I the, he, like, the he rant, did. he goes, What's up, you Irish cunt? What are you doing? You're probably too busy punching old men in the bar or jerking off because you can't get because your because your wife is a four and like she's ugly. Like, that's it. You have me and you have to throw hands let alone right. a combat fighter, like, you know, a combat <laughs> sports guy. So he's just, you know, and Logan did the same thing with Floyd, a little less personal, just taking, you know, you, you can't read shots. But this is how, you know, this is how the promo game works. But Jake just went, like, full heel, over the top. Your wife is ugly. He's got to do it. Yeah, and and also Connor, like, I, I I'm a Connor McGregor fan. Like, I've, I've never had a Conor McGregor match happen in which I, A, I didn't buy it, and B, I wasn't rooting for Conor. Like, right, I, right. I love Conor. Right. And even I, as a Conor McGregor fan, listen to that and go, well, Conor's kind of got it coming. Like, Conor, when Conor's promoting a fight, he's pretty fucking ruthless. He's, he's racist. You know, he's sexist. He's personal. He's, you know. So right. now the, flipped, the script is flipped, and now it's time. Now, what I hope happens, what I was thinking, he, and Jake Paul also says that he offered him $50 million cash. Like fifty, like he'll give him the fifty million, like to to do it, which is like, and this this TikTok went viral. Uh, this girl who is a club table table service bottle service girl says, uh, "We'll play the clip here." I'm about to just pour you a glass of some piping hot fucking tea, real quick. Happy Monday. My team sent you a fifty million dollar offer this morning. Fifty million dollars cash, Google funds, the biggest fight offer you've ever been offered. But you're scared to fight me, Connor. Now that's priceless, because when I worked in a club and the club comped your multi-thousand dollar tab and said just tip, tip the girls who took care of you all night, you tipped us $40. $40 to split on your multi-thousand dollar tab. But I'm glad you got $50 million to offer Conor McGregor to fist your asshole with. So... Yeah, first of all, that, to fist your asshole with that like Jersey accent is fucking great. But uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, does he have that kind of cash? I don't know about that. Like, I guess it's probably like with money that we'll make from the pay per view. I mean, he can't be throwing around fifty million, right? I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. But I, I also I, I feel like tipping tip shaming is one thing that I. I just feel like the story's never fully told. Never. It's like, like I tip you I forty because you like. You just like grab my jacket, but the people who like serving me all night, I fucking gave them a thousand dollars or you know whatever. There's always something. And, and there's a chance that it was fully told here, and that would be insane. But it's like, it's just so insane that someone would give forty dollars to split to people. Uh, I'm, like, I'm like, it can't be the full story. No, it really, it just, I mean, and maybe if he, if it is, then Jake is you know that big of a piece of shit. But for a guy who likes to be flashy and throw around money, you would think 
he would almost be the opposite, like an over tipper and not out of the goodness of his heart out of like, look how cool I am. You know what I mean? 40 is just, I just, I just, I I think it's probably because I just am such an over tipper myself that like, I I'm weary of like maybe one time I do bad math and I'm like, I ended up looking like an asshole. I'm like, like, Oh, I just did it. Like I wanted to tip you. Well, I just did. I just didn't put it. I I didn't carry the zero or something. Like I'm a fucking idiot. It's my fault. Like, if you just reach out to me, I will absolutely pay you twenty five percent. Like, of a yes, tip. yes. It is just like that. I, like I, I, I was always like a twenty, twenty two percenter. Like since the pandemic started, I'm like twenty five, thirty percent tipper. Yeah. So like, I'm, I just give, I give monster tips, and I know I'm so bad at math that one day I might give a shit tip. <laughs> Didn't intend to. I'm just like, covered that, my base. That's the thing. Like, if you're gonna tip shame me, reach out to me first. I'll probably Venmo you because it was probably just a mistake. <laughs> right. Know, give me I'm, the I'm chance. I'm just dumb. I'm, right. not, I'm not mean. I'm dumb. Right. It's, it's a different right. thing. Uh, <laughs> See, like, but, it's like, I always say, like, with like, basically, when I get a tip, I just like, whenever I, I get like a bill, I just round it to a hundred and then give thirty bucks because it's it, like, go. yeah, and that's hard for me to do because it's just. I, rounding is hard because I'm a dumb person, but like I just can't see how. I also love that it's just always like it's always at least a hundred dollars. It's always you know what I mean. It's just like uh, around here, like the money is always going to be a lot. The bill's going to be a fucking lot all the goddamn yeah. time. <laughs> but but what I was going to say, got- wait, was was if so? Say the money is like, say he's got fifty million, like there it's set right, and he's fight. So he's got the money. And Connor is now fighting in like a fake match. It's a boxing match. He's not a boxer. Jake is not really truly a, you know, he has, he's a professional, but not whatever. So it doesn't affect like his career, his record, his chance at a UFC belt. The money is clear. What if it's like ding, ding, ding. And Connor just like kicks him in the face, just gives him like a <laughs> UFC spinning heel kick. And he's like, yeah, this was never about, like, boxing, dude. I wanted to break your face because you disrespected me. And then he's, like, the hero who fucking actually took out Jake Paul. That's very true. And you probably, like, that's go to jail incredible. because it's, like, you can't, like, do shit like that in a sanctioned, you know what I mean? Like, that'd probably be, like, assault or something. But whatever. Yeah. That would be so awesome if it was, like, the, the pay-per-view lasted four seconds, but he just got, like, a spinning kick to the face. <laughs> that's some, that's some it, villain shit. That would probably be great for Jake, too. Mm. Like that, that like everyone comes out a winner. There. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Um, all right, so we're gonna do a couple of the assholes. We got interviews today. We've got Rosebud Baker and uh, Brian Austin Green, two of our favorites. Back. Rosebud is just such a bitch. I love it. I just <laughs> fucking love that bitch. So uh, let's do am I the asshole first. It's brought to you by Screwball Whiskey. If you are a little bit of a screwball, you're a little bit of an outsider, you're a little bit of a a nomad uh, wanderer, and you are looking for a cocktail, finding nailing down that cocktail. You know, when you're a kid, you drink some like some hard lemonades, and then you get to beer, and then maybe one day uh, you're kind of cocktailless, and you got guys who can walk up to the bar, order their drink, and they just know what they want, and you're always like, ah, I don't know, what should I get? What should I get? Screwball whiskey. They take care of it for you. It's it's uh it's the real deal. It's it's whiskey. It's got the right bite to it, but it's a little bit smoother, so you don't have to worry about it going down harsh. Uh, it's got the peanut butter flavoring, so it's got a little bit of a sweetness to it. So it'll still get the job done, still uh cut the edge after a long day, but it's tasty. You can do it as a shot. You can do it neat. You can do it on the rocks. You can mix it with uh, juices and sodas to make a little, like, you could do peanut butter and jelly with the transfusion mix with the grape uh, grape soda. You could do uh, almost like a apple pie a la mode type of thing with a scoop of ice cream. You turn it into a dissolve, uh, an adult dessert, an adult milkshake. You do the espresso type of martini thing where you have that mar- that peanut butter whiskey, that nutty flavoring. It is, uh, it's a delight, man. It is, it's like, you know, mix it with your old fashioned, mix it into your regular whiskey drinks. Now all of a sudden you just have a little bit of, uh, a little bit of peanut butter in the flavor, hot chocolate, eggnog, coffee, all these holiday, uh, winter drinks. Why don't you put a little peanut butter whiskey in it there? Screwball, the original and most awarded peanut butter whiskey. It's available near you right now. You can pick it up at your local store or get it delivered today. Go to screwballwhiskey.com for more info and click on buy now. Please drink responsibly. Advertisement by Screwball Spirits, LLC, San, Mar- San Diego, California. Whiskey with natural flavors, 35% alcohol by volume. Am I the is this our first? Is this our first uh, winter with Screwball Whiskey? Because I it, it it slaps different in the winter. Yeah, it does. I think it I think it probably is. And it's it's a good winter one where you're just trying to like, you know, 
Again, you, you don't you don't want to have to like chug it like like choke it down. It's it's smooth, but still has that perfect bite. You need to have a little bit of bite, you know. So, yeah. So the, yeah. the winter time is the perfect time for that. Uh, am I the asshole here? We've got we got a couple ones. One that'll make you scratch your head. One that'll make you fucking. <sighs> we'll we'll ease into it. Am I the asshole for being pissed that my wife's dog cheated on my dog? My wife and I both have uh, Moody's, M-U-G-I-S, a very rare Hungarian, shout out to Hungaria, sheepdog breed. We actually met through a social media group about the dogs. Hers is female, mine is a male. They go at it nonstop, and she got pregnant. I was so excited to have pups. They'd be purebreds and so cute. I love them. By the way, this says apologies for the bad English, so it's a little bit uh, broken English, but I love them. She was excited, too. We always wanted to breed them. Well, a few days ago, she gave birth, and they're not purebreds. Looks like she got fucked by a German shepherd or a Belgian mono, m molinois or something like that. Great. I don't want to keep the pups, and I want to give them away. We agreed we would have purebreds. She doesn't want to, and she says we need to keep them. I'm down to keep them, but we need to have purebreds. She says no, and that shows she's going to go get her dog spaded. Well, I'm fucking pissed. We agreed we'd have purebred puppies, and she's going back on her word. The case of the cheating dog. What do you got, John? I mean, you are absolutely an asshole for headlining it the way you headlined it. Yeah. Like, I don't think infidelity is a thing in the animal kingdom. I, I, I believe it's uh, just penguins. I was are the say, only, uh, penguins, the only can, mammals who breed penguins, life or penguins life. Are, are monogamous. And if you cheat on a penguin, it's like, oh, man, you're a fucking asshole. But I think pretty right, much everybody true. else is, uh, you know, you can fuck or get fucked by anybody you come across. So like, like I get wanting something, right? Like, like, well, we agreed upon this. Yeah. And. But like I don't know, man. Life fucking changes, dude. Like you, you don't have a purebred anymore. I don't, and also, just saying the word purebred, you sound too much like Hitler. Very Hitler. You just can't. Very you Aryan can't nation. say purebred. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Whether or not its origins are in truly in in rate in puppy kennels, um, that, but it doesn't matter. In 2020, purebred sounds like some white supremacist shit. It does. And honestly, that's and the big you, thing for me. That's really it. Like, like I think if you, if you, uh, business wise or socially, I mean this. By the way, this is wacky to meet on a social media. I guess, I guess not technically. If you like really loved your dog and you were a part of like some Facebook group and you chatted someone else up, and then that was like your common ground. You know, I could see that you're on you're on a dating app and you put your dog in it and that's how you connect. But this feels like these people are like. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these people fuck their dogs. Okay, there, there's there's some weird <laughs> shit going on with these dogs. Uh, but if you if you're that intense with dogs and you say we're gonna breed them, we're gonna gr we're gonna put them in dog shows and all this shit, we've got to have my accountant actually is a dog show guy and he does purebred beagles and they like they go to like Westminster and he comes in like the top ten and they're intense about it. It's like a lifestyle and a business. And so I get all that. And if all of a sudden you're like, well, I thought we were gonna have. 10 purebreds to pick from and now we don't have any that's a problem but the 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 thing here for me is that you have to run around telling people i don't want to raise the mutts i don't want to raise non-purebreds and you sound I don't want like a, a nazi dog. yeah yeah you sound <laughs> like a fucking nazi then but it is tough if you if, you know raising like a litter of puppies probably is not fucking easy and when it's not the ones that you thought you were going to get it's probably really fucking hard yeah i i, I don't even I don't even really care about him being like, because you get like, yeah, you had your heart set on something. I don't know. I think you're kind of fucking weird if you're like, these aren't the color I wanted. But I mean, I guess. I love that he's like, you, looks like she got fucked by a German shepherd or something. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd like it more fucking Hitler. Um, <laughs> the, but there was something else he said in here. Can you run it back for me one more time? Yeah. There uh, was something else he said where I was like, yeah, no, you're the asshole, man. Well, a few days ago, she gave birth, and they're not purebreds. Looks like she got fucked by a German shepherd or a Belgian Molinois or something. Great. I don't want to keep the pups, and I, and I want to give them away. We agreed to have purebreds. She doesn't want to and says we should keep them. I'm down to keep the puppies, but we had to have purebreds. She says no, and that she'll go get her dog spaded. I'm fucking pissed. We agreed to have purebred puppies, and she's going back on her word. 
No, I guess they. I guess they. I guess they. I knocked all the, the the points I had. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this guy. You know, they did have an agreement, but like you said, life. You know, comes at you, and it's like you gotta. You gotta. Let me see what some of the comments here are. Uh, uh, so much to unpack. You're the asshole. They're still puppies. One guy says, not the asshole. I'm deeply in the minority on this one. The dog infidelity thing is super weird. He's overreacting, but I can see how he's up, uh, upset that she didn't agree, uh, fulfill, fulfill their agreement. I mean, you know, pups, dogs, it's going to get weird people. You know, there's going to be people who are mutt lovers and, and rescue dogs and shit who just don't even understand this. But I, I can understand being the, upset. The people I, who, do you know how weird dog people are? Like like dog dog people. Yeah, the weirdos. Is yeah. that is that you can be so, you can just love something that's literally universally beloved. No, there are few and far between people who will even put up even a little bit of an argument when you say dogs are the best things in the world. Right? Everyone will be like, yeah, like, right, dogs yeah. are great. Yeah. Dogs, bruh. Yep. And and still, despite the fact that almost unanimous agreement with you. You're so weird. People are like, but that dude's a fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's how far like, you take it. Yeah. That's how like that's how fucking bizarre you are. You yeah. like something that everyone likes, and they go, I don't like it like he does. Also, let that, me just say this though. Let me just say this. Deranged. In what world do you care and do you have a right to force me? He's not talking about like drowning them. He just wants to right. give them away. Like if I if my dog went and got pregnant right now, and I was like I don't want to raise a litter of 12 puppies. I'm going to give them away. You wouldn't be like, you're a fucking asshole. You have to raise the puppies. You know what I mean? He's just saying, yeah, the, he's just saying, these are not the dogs I want to raise. That's, you're not, you're not like a fucking villain. You know, you're not a, you're not a villain, but there is because they did intentionally breed. Right. And they were going to right. take care of them. Now you're rejecting that. And that feels very, what, alienated. what now is like, is you and the wife got pregnant. You said I'm only having a boy. Right. Turns out yes. you had a girl. Huge. And you're like, well, we're getting rid of it. That's a very, a very good distinction. Yes. I I that is that's well said. Um, okay. Let me go back to the Am I the Asshole page because this one, it's time for the doozy. I actually uh the 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 headlines a doozy. Sometimes you read these things and it gets a little bit more reasonable, but am I the asshole? My mom sent me a dick pic. And is mad that I'm mad. Long time lurker, first time poster, and I'm on mobile. Anyway, this morning my mom, 51, and I, oh, she's a, did you think this was a son or a daughter? Uh, I thought son. Me too. It's a fem- It's a daughter. That th- that changes things significantly. It's very significant. Maybe, maybe it's just because I'm a, you know, I put myself in, in, the, in the story right away. But I thought right. this was going to be a guy getting a picture of a dick from his mom. Now I'm going to, we'll read the story, but if this is like a single mom texting her 22 year old daughter, I feel like this is just like, I don't know, girls being girls. It's a little weird, but (laughs) all right, let's see. 22 year old female. We were texting and she mentioned that quote, four men from her past had texted her all last night. My parents have been divorced for three years. It's been difficult for my mom to understand and respect the boundaries I ask for in regards to her dating. Nobody wants to hear the intimate details of their parents' lives, but we've been working on it. She then goes to look at this Christian Grey wannabe and sends me a screenshot of one of these, quote, men from her past sending me a freaking dick pic. I immediately freak out. I'm like, what the fuck, mom? I could tell that she thought I was kidding with my over-the-top reactions. Uh, I could tell that she thought I was kidding with my over-the-top reactions. After the initial shock wore off and I deleted the picture, I sent her a text that essentially said that it's not okay to send me stuff like that and it way violates any and all boundaries. She then gets mad at me for being mad and claims I'm shaming her and then I'm overreacting. I literally feel like I'm taking crazy pills because in what world does one, a mom think that that's okay and two, argue about the fact that it would piss off slash make her daughter uncomfortable. I told some of my friends and most reacted similar but a couple said, I don't know, it's funny, y'all are close. So am I the asshole slash overreacting? I think that I am getting turned on. (laughs) I think I would watch a video that starts out like this. I think that it is so funny in seeing just how adults adapt to the internet. Yeah. Like, like it always started with like, uh, like when you, when you first got on the internet as a kid, right. And it was always like, don't believe everything you read on the internet Yep. and careful who you share personal information with. And then 
immediately adults just started sending money to Nigerian princes yep. and sharing clearly fake Facebook stories. Right. And then, right. and then it was like, well, careful, like with your, you know, and then sexting became a big thing. Yep. And it's like, well, careful with what you send to people because that stuff lives forever. <laughs> and now they're like, hang on a second. I got dick on my phone, mm. but my daughter's got to my daughter. see this. I mean, <laughs> my thing here is that she has said that she's had a conversation about her dating life and said it makes me uncomfortable and like I'm supporting you but we're, and we're working on it but please don't if that's all been said and then you go sending cock shots it's like that's you know that's tough um, you've, you've clearly crossed the line at yeah that point. yeah and I think also doubling down like if your daughter says hey I'm uncomfortable with you sending dick pics then that's it story's over like nothing more to say here so uh yeah, I, but, you know, I could see a scenario where there's some daughters and moms who kind of like, I don't know, could laugh about it. and. Yeah, but guess what? Those daughter and moms are like, they're like the fucking mother daughter version of dog people of the obs- right. of the obsessive dog where it's you like, take it too far. look, it's cool to be cool. But yeah. like, you're too cool. Right. Weird. I'm a cool you're, mom. You're a... I send dick pics. No, you're you're a bad mom. Yeah. Right. You're a fucking lunatic if you think that I'm. But I mean, like, yeah, like, I'm trying to think of just like flipping it like. If my parents were divorced and my dad sent me like a nude of like some girl, like I'd be like, dude, this is fucking a lot. Actually, to I, be I, honest, I you know, what? I I would be uncomfortable probably, but I think I'd be like, like, oh, she's hot, dad. Like, and throw him a bone and just be like, I think I would just swallow that one. I think I'd be uncomfortable, but I'd be like, he's dating and he's trying to figure this out, and like, I'm not going to shut him down. I don't think I think I'd shut him. I'd be like, what the fuck is this? Stop, you dude. need to, yeah, you need to get it together. I'd All probably right? be gotta, like. Yo, send me some more, Dad. I'm like, what you got? <laughs> uh, by the way, just speaking of dick pics and stuff, I didn't know this. Like, Brad Pitt's cock is very much available on the internet. Oh, right. You texted me that this morning. Just, just um, Google like Brad Pitt nude. There's a shot of him kind of doing the Justin Bieber, like walking outside of what looks like a hotel balcony uh, patio type thing, naked, and it's just like a solid, soft penis that I feel like the world, you know, should talk oh, about. Yeah. Right. That's like you can tell that that when he grows, that's a good cock. And I, and I just feel like, you know, he's the hottest man alive or at least, you know, in many people's minds. And, you know, I feel like we should be like, you know, you know, you, we know of the people who have nudes out there and you talk about their dicks and, and their nude pictures, guys and girls sometimes. And Brad Pitt never gets mentioned. I don't think many people know that his dick is readily available. Very readily available. And exactly. clearly, it's, he I'm didn't gonna, scrub I'm the internet. It. You know, like he could get the, he could get rid of this, and he's like, "Yeah, leave it out there." <laughs> dude, dude the, one of the first results is from leakmeat.com. <laughs> see, <laughs> I can see Brad being like, "Leakmeat.com, leave it, leave it. We're good, yeah. we're good." He's also an obscene amount of photoshops where, like, he's just his face is just photoshopped on the gay porn. Yes, yeah, I did like, see those as well. Yes, I saw that. It's it's <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot of that going on for sure. There are also some I can't tell if it's like I mean some of these are ridiculous. Um but like so on this one it's like he's doing like weird stretches and stuff. Did you see this one? No, I didn't see that one. I'm going to see if I can like what like what is what is this stretch? Can you see that? Yeah, that looks like he's doing some like dancing almost, like some. It's very bizarre. So maybe like, some that, yoga or some just, shit. I don't know. Just, 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 that, just helicopter your dick around, Brad. You don't have to get fancy with it. You know, just. That, just that looks like he was like, "Yo, I want. Like, if I if I get real ridiculous out of here, people will. I, I want to be seen as well." Yeah, saying, yeah, like. yeah. All right, voicemail time. It's brought to you by Cross Rope. You want to get in shape? The New Year is coming. New Year's uh, resolutions are coming. And, you know, years gone by, you never stick to your New Year's resolution. You never lose the weight because you're doing the same old boring exercises. You go to the gym or you run on the treadmill. You do push-ups and sit-ups. And it's like, oh, that's right. I fucking hate doing this. It's not entertaining. It's not fun. I don't see results. Boom. By February, you give up and you're eating your fat and, and it's all for shit. Now that's where cross rope comes in because it's a new, fun, exciting type of way to work out that gives you cardio. It also builds strength. It builds muscle. And, uh, you know, you feel like you're almost like it's almost like playing a sport hitting the jump rope. And so you'll stick to your workout. You'll enjoy it and you'll reach your goals. You can do uh, uh, weighted ropes if you are uh, stronger or an expert. You can do light ropes if you are a beginner. You can do uh, you can strengthen your core, your back, your shoulders, your arms, your glutes and more. No fluff, just a fun, effective workout. 
It's a high efficiency cardio workout uh, that also gives you full body strength training, uh, training with high intensity cardio. Uh, it's a they've got fitness challenges on their app where you can uh, look through workout routines and figure out what's best for you. They have the steel ropes, the ergonomic handles, and patented fast clip system for swapping weights fast. You can do the Get Lean program or the Get Strong program, or you can get both for the Get Fit bundle. And right now there's a 60-day risk-free trial. So for two months for your New Year's resolution, you can try it and still send it back if you don't like it. But by then you're going to be shredded and losing weight. So what do you got to lose? I'm throwing a personal guarantee. No one will send it back after 60 days. You will see like it'll be fun. It'll be entertaining. It will fucking work. And you'll you'll very much like I guarantee guarantee no one sends it back in 60 days. Ever try it. If you're even considering uh, uh, working out or, you know, a New Year's resolution, get this personal final bird guarantee. You will not send it back in 60 days. Mine is sitting right over here. I'll fucking pull it up. I'm no no poser. Leave it right by my door. It's the real deal, bingo, folks. Bingo. It's the real fucking deal. There, there it, it is. is. Go to crossrope.com slash KFC, and you can get yours with a $40 discount off the Get Fit Bundle, plus free shipping. That's crossrope.com slash KFC, 40 bucks off the Get Fit Bundle. Voicemails, let's do it. So Nick, Can I just, tell you something? Yeah, what's up? I, I've, been, I've been in this chair for like... Six hours today, Ugh. and I am in just my Agony. back is in shambles. <laughs> like, like, I just have a fucking folding chair. At, and like, why don't my, you just like get phone. in bed, dude? I don't know. Just is lay down. Kind of weird, Go- to like get yeah. in bed. I don't know. It's, uh, whatever. Let's play. We'll, we're, have- we're we're almost at the finish line. Let's go. <laughs> Six hours and ten minutes. I need yeah. ten more minutes for you. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll just lay in bed. Let's do it. I was wondering if uh, you guys would rather be blind from the hours of 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. every day or have no thumbs. I'll hang up and let you talk. <laughs> this this is an old school, like, what the fuck? No rhyme or reason. Uh, blind from 9 to 2 or no thumbs, period? No thumbs. No thumb. You can't, you can't not have thumbs. That makes that turns you into a monkey. That turns you into a primate. That's like what... Oh, no, monkeys do have thumbs, right? That's what differentiates us from, yes. like, us and the monkeys and, like, everyone else in the world. They don't have opposable thumbs. You got to have thumbs. Come on. Correct. The, Although, but I here's don't know. The deal too. I feel like I could, like, right now, if I lost my thumbs, I could, like, get me, like, a personal spider and be like, you come with me and you do all my thumb work. But no, you can't, but you like, can't even like, or anything. What you know? do you, with thumb, okay, so, like, I get to the office, right? So I, I'm just thinking, like, on my day to day schedules. Like, I could be blind. It would be easier for me to not have thumbs because here's the deal: I just, I just, I just walk to work. Yep. And then talk. And I, I just, I just, I, talk, I, I, I can open a door still. Like, what do I don't even know what I need a thumb for? I guess the piss. Yeah, no, well, nah, you're, like, well, your phone, dude. You're gonna need thumbs for your phone. But like, I can if I all I need to do is get to the office and then. I can just I can just leave my phone on my desk and just text. Yeah, you, you could get through it. You know what's funny? Do you know how I text a lot of times? I feel like you ever see like the kid in elementary school who holds the pencil like this, like all weird. Yeah. Or the kid yeah. who has like a weird batting stance. I feel like sometimes I hold my phone like this and I text with my left thumb and my right index finger. I mean, that's insane. Really I, I feel like I've done weird stuff like that, too. But, but, but is, I still use my is, thumbs to hold the like the bottom of the phone. So even if I'm not using my thumbs, I need my thumbs. In fact, actually, now as I'm doing it right here, I could definitely just text my thumb. I have one thumb here that's not yeah, touching my phone pow, at pow, all. Pow, 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 pow. The other thumb like you like this. Boom! Blind. I got my pinky hooked under. Blind is blind would be no problem for me Monday through Friday. Saturday and Sunday, I'd like to be able to see. But like nine a.m. to two p.m. Monday through Friday. Yeah, yeah. I I, I have to see nothing. <laughs> that is a testament to how much of a life uh, joke your life is i don't need vision (laughs) during the weekdays and the work hours (laughs) that's when i don't need to be able to see things are you my my only (laughs) my only uh my only issue there would be like getting a lift 
to work in the morning. Yeah. Like I couldn't walk to work because I'm right. blind. Right. Um, so I'd have to get a lift and then I don't know, I'm sure it'd probably You know what sucks though is like blind people do, they do walk around the city, but that's when they're like blind for life and they learn. Yeah. If right. you if you got sight back every six hours, you'd be like, I'm not learning how to do anything. I'm just waiting. I just sit Dude, here and wait till two I'm, o'clock. I don't even need to get sight back. If I would go blind now, I'm just blind. Yeah, that's it. It's over. I'm just yeah, I'm just like I'm just the guy who has to be walked around. Like I'm not going to learn how to survive. But basically, you turn into a golden doodle. You just need to be walked. <laughs> the uh, but I, I guess I would need to read Twitter and stuff. But also like, but I, I would just need that for topics. And you could just tell me topics before That's recorded. That's true. Like it, it would make it would make your life. I was going to say the caretakers life. would be like, "Fuck this <laughs> this game." But that is a good one. I, I feel like that's going to be like a fifty, like a true fifty fifty. I could see a lot yeah. of people going both ways on that one. I so wait, is it you just you just never have thumbs ever again? Ever again. So that's hard. And like, like opening like, I mean, things, like, like like opening a jar, opening a. I don't think you can open doorknobs. Really, I mean, you can you can do these things, but it's really not easy. Uh, you can just drink it, Kevin. Yeah, like how I mean, do you just having a drink? Oh you have yeah, to use both hands. well yeah, you have to use both hands for everything. So like. Maybe as you start to run through it, there's just too much that your thumbs are. I mean, if they really are the hallmark of like differentiating between the human race and other other animals, we probably shouldn't turn our nose up at it. But um, but blind though, you know, blindness is you know, I can't I can't ever willingly choose blind. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's literally like I, I would argue that the thumb is the thing that separates civilization from the rest of the world. Like right. there are no people without thumbs who are civilized. Right. Or, right. Or no, right. no things without thumbs right. who are civilized. Right. So it would be uh, a pretty tough, tough loss. But I mean, again, I, I think I could, I think I could be better at surviving with the blind aspect. But again, I do, it but I, I, I do, I do think you can, make a, a pretty like decent argument both ways, which leads me to think it'll be a 50 50. Like both of them kind of suck. Both of them are doable. Both of them, you know, like you're not like completely fucked. It's just wildly inconvenient. Let's just do it. Let's just, I'll cut my thumbs off and you have to be blind from 9am to 2am. We should, we should try to at least do one day where it's like blind versus no thumbs. Yeah. Like we'll, we'll tape, you know, you tape your thumb down and we'll do one day like that. And then we'll do one day nine 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 a.m. to two p.m. with a blindfold. Okay, done. Next up, what up, KFC fight to producer BC Nick? So a couple of days ago, I got a consultation for laser hair removal in my pubic region called a uh, Manzurian. It covers my dick, ball bag, gooch, asshole, the whole shebang. So the person I was consulting with was a nice, hot young blonde. But I didn't think anything of it. I just figured uh, she would take down my info, what I want done, and tell the doctor. So I just got a confirmation email about my appointment next week, and she's going to be the one to perform the procedure. So my question is, would you be able to have an attractive young woman stare straight into your asshole with a laser? And also, would you prefer a hot young girl doing the procedure or a man? Thanks. Hope you show. I – this is wild. So so that that got a little um, little jumpy there at the beginning. So he, What exactly he, is happening? He's getting laser hair removal for, like, his dick, his balls, his asshole. They call it the manzillion. And he has a okay. hot young blonde who is doing the procedure. And he wants to know if you could handle that, if you prefer that, if you would prefer a man. No questions asked. Give me a dude. Yeah. Not absolutely. even. Uh, I want someone who like us. knows the the goods and knows the. And, and there's no I like I feel like I would be a little bit embarrassed. I'd be a lot of bit embarrassed. There'd be a lot of awkwardness. And I want someone and I don't want that. And I want someone who like knows the dick and balls and knows everything. Oh, uh, well, see, I think a woman probably knows a dick and balls Mm-mm. from her angle. From her angle, than a guy but, but like from a pain point of view and what like hurts and what okay. you can, you know, you know, you can move it this way and do it that way. Girls know how to like suck it and fuck it. Guys know, you know what? Probably more so even, even in an aggressive manner. Like, like, you know, I once knew an, a nurse who worked in the NICU where it's like the under, under, uh, you know, and she was like, you can. Did I lose you, John? No, you're yeah. okay. She was like, you can pick these things up. You can move these kids around. Like, you think they're so fragile, but, like, you can move them and, you know, put them here and there, flip them over, do whatever. I feel like the dick and balls is a little more resilient than you think. And if you're getting in there to laser it out, you know, you can lift the ball bag, stretch it out, put it this way, <laughs> put it that way. Let's, you know, I want to get my money's worth here. I don't want you going in there with kid gloves. 
Uh, but I, yeah, give me the dude, man. And I, I don't, I don't. Give me the dude. Just I, I, I'm more so from the embarrassment standpoint, just because yeah. like the whole time I'd be like, ah, oh, she's just thinking that like your soft penis. She wishes this was any other dick in the world. Like it's. Uh, it, uh, although I, I would argue this, I think that like I say this with girls all the time. If you're like a semi-attractive girl, and certainly if you're a hot chick going to get a Brazilian, do you know like some of the clientele those those people have to see sometimes like very overweight people. Very gross yeah. people, old people, gross pussies. If you're just like even mildly good, you're like a dream come true for them. So I, I feel like my dick is. But you know what is a a fully bald, soft penis is one of the more embarrassing sights you'll ever see. Dude, yeah, I'm like I've never even heard of dudes getting this. Me neither. Like I, I guess I understand the 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 ass situation if that's something you got to deal with. But like, I don't want. Yeah, I could laser no my asshole, but I but I want I want some pubes though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Put that on the calendar for 2022. I I, I can laser the, my asshole, but I want some pubes. <laughs> I think that just like from a woman's like from a an intersex standpoint, just like there is there is no doubt that dealing with a person of the other other sex has sexual undertones as long as yes. you're both somewhat attractive, attractive yeah. or and somewhat in the same age range you know yeah. same attractiveness level same age level like there's just undoubtedly going to be some concern like but would they fuck me should i yeah. fuck them like what's and, dude, the deal? and imagine so that, i'd rather not have that with the person who's fucking waxing me or, or well and me. that's the thing too i don't know exactly how this works but i'm envisioning you're sitting there and you're no let's let's not sell ourselves short we're decently attractive right she is there you're you think she's hot, maybe she's into you, and you're like lifting your leg over your head and she's like blasting you with a laser gun on your butthole. I mean and you gotta sit there for a little while, like she's probably like, Okay, spread your cheeks, and she's just blasting your butthole, being like, So how's your day at work? I mean, yeah, you can't have that. You can't And have guess that. what? You have to you have to do that from multiple and, times, not, right? I was gonna say from people I know who've gotten these you you have it's it's sessions it's sessions with a, a plural s. Give me a guy. I I don't care about these things. I heard, I heard the the Chicago guys talking about this. I know you're not a massage guy at all. I can get a massage from a dude, no fucking problem. Oh, without without fail. Like, I mean, well, actually, I mean, I, I'm saying like you, I didn't have a problem doing it. I did. Not, I've only had the one. Enjoy it. I, didn't, yeah. I did not enjoy it, but I, at no point was I like. Well, actually, I mean, they do tickle me. So, no, like, no, I listen, your massage experience, you have every <laughs> right to say, I don't like massages and I don't want to do it. He was rubbing your belly button. That guy was raping you. Okay. That guy was raping you. But for me, it wasn't even like, like a tickle, it was a twirl. No, 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 no. Finger no, my belly no, button. That's disgusting. He was picking out the lint. That's disgusting. I, and I've as gotten, I do that right no. now, I have so much sugar in my belly button. Oh, God. You're going to be, you're going to have sugar in your asshole for the next like six months because of that photo shoot. <laughs> I, I can, I can, uh, I've gotten a million massages in my life. And like sometimes, there was this fucking Asian guy named Danny. He had fucking hands of steel. He could get in my muscles and rip my knots out. Like I prefer a dude sometimes. I don't if you're insecure about getting like I mean, if you're an athlete and you get like your trainer rubbing you, are you sitting there like, oh, that's gay dude? Get the right. fuck out of here. A guy can rub me all day long. Whatever. I rub want, my like, butt. A big, if I'm if I'm getting if I'm getting lasered, I want like a big burly Russian dude. Yeah, again, the guy who knows what's up. Like we got to get this fucking hair off. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, let's get into our uh, interviews today. Uh, first one is brought to you by our girl Erica Fleischman, Fleischman Salon. Man, I'll yay, tell you, yay. we were doing. Look, you know what? Here's the benefit of doing these things at home. Show, I can just show, show you all the products. Show the right? collection, Here man. We, go. we were let's doing. I, I watched our Jenga stream back the other day. We both had phenomenal flow. Well, that's for right here. That's day at the beach, the at sea the beach. salt. Then we got the damn good shampoo. The shampoo. The that, damn good conditioner, which the, is the, the bubble bath on your head. Mm -hmm. Got the damn good conditioner here. And got my bad boy right here. The damn good paste. The paste I mean, is what I need. The, the, the hair cream is like if you need a little touch up on the go. The hair paste is when you need to control the beast. And right now, I mean, we had, John, we had... The lights were hitting it. We had like shiny hair. We had wavy flow going. I was like, yo, this is a fucking advertisement for Fleischman right here, right now. We had it going on, man. And I'll tell you what, I haven't been, I haven't gotten a haircut probably in like 
two, three months and my hair just keeps on growing in the right way because she knows how to cut hair so that it just can always grow in and you don't look shaggy or bushy or, or lame. So she applies the same logic to her hair care line. So even if you can't get to the salon, you know that this girl knows hair. She knows how to take care of your hair, keep it looking good long term. And uh, if you get all the products, you, uh, you, you know, you're set with the scent with the style, with the cleanliness, the hygiene, everything you need for your hair. They're also bundling products now, so you can bundle, which I, I recommend you just get everything because it's all stuff that you either need or want, and you're going to need on a regular basis. So I would get the subscription where it gets mailed to your house. Then I would get the bundle where you can bundle all the products together, and I would use my promo code KFC for 20% off. You go to FleischmannSalon.com. That's F-L-E-I-S-C-H-M-A-N Salon.com. Click at the top shop, or you can just go .com slash shop and use the promo code KFC for 20% off. Get an additional discount for bundling. Get an additional another additional discount for subscription. You're saving, you got like three promo codes in one to have great hair, shiny hair, hair that smells good, smooth hair, long hair. Get the gummies to help promote the growth. I mean, it's, it's a full car wash deluxe for your hair. How could you not? Well, and, and it's also like, it's for hair. That the women of Barstool Sports say are two of the best guys with head, two of the best heads of hair around here. So listen so why don't up. You go ahead. Come on, join us. FleischmannSalon.com, promo code KFC. Let's talk to Rosebud Baker, that bitch. I thought that was actually Rosebud sitting there for a second. What up? Yeah, I just like came in, posed. I, I was like, I was like, oh, that's a wild way to start an interview. But that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> That's just how I start all my Zoom meetings in full <laughs> pose. Curl up on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> oh me, I'm just hanging out. You guys, hold on. <laughs> wow, is this OnlyFans? What's going on here? I just, I just broke my ring light. Oh God. <laughs> this is why I, this is why I don't have an OnlyFans. <laughs> Honestly, you'd probably, you'd probably be, have one of the worst OnlyFans ever. I. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Hurtful and rude. Second, like, no, no. Well, let me let me rephrase. Like, devastatingly true. Yeah, devastatingly. Like you, you could have a great one. Yeah, you just wouldn't because you'd be like not into it, or you'd be like, all right, instead of like doing some sex stuff, I'm gonna like argue. I'm gonna make fun of Andy or some shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. I'd try to get creative with it, and they'd be like, "That's not what we're here just for." Show bitch. the goods, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, bro, I was actually thinking about you yesterday because, first of all, we were watching some of your uh, stand-up, but second of all, I, I gotta go get it. I just gotta show this to you. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know where he's going with this, I don't think. I'm kind of terrified to find out. What do, you, what do you think he's gonna come back with? A picture of a homeless woman. That's <laughs> what I think. So I saw this and it made me think of you. <laughs> Here's this woman in a moving blanket outside. <laughs> I walked into our bathroom. Yeah. It, it, we have like our uh, our laundry is right next to the bathroom. Yeah. And I guess my girlfriend was like cleaning out like the thing you get the detergent in. Oh, yeah. I know that. The bathroom, oh. <laughs> this was just sitting there. Wait, and what is that? Hold on. It, it's just it's like it's what you get. You pour the detergent into and then you pour that into the washing machine. Oh, oh shit. Like, Diva cup. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I was like, what oh. the fuck is this? <laughs> that's your brand now. That's, that's Oh we'll my God. That's beautiful. That. <laughs> that is really beautiful. You guys, I'm you so see, happy. You the sink? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so funny that that's like actually worse than a picture of a homeless woman. <laughs> <laughs> I got this cup full of blood and it made me think of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god love it what's so what's, what is uh, this hold on a second kevin has to go into work and uh, and you know fuck that- you rosebud <laughs> fuck you because all i i i i didn't think i was going to be able to make it in and then i was able to make it in and then you weren't able to come back to the original time and you're giving me a hard time about it just fuck off okay i, I have <laughs> It's so easy in like the era of Zoom to like, like yeah. I, we always go in together. Like we always do our interviews together. Yeah. And there was one moment where Kevin was like, "Look, if if Rosebud can move up, can you go now?" I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll just do it at home." And then once you <laughs> accept that fact, like you know what, I'm not putting pants on. Yeah, I'm you just, had no shot of coming in. <laughs> like I'm just gonna just do this yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's so funny because Kevin texted me yesterday and was like, hey, can we move it? Blah, blah, blah. I was like, no problem. Like, I can move it to whenever. So flexible. And, she was great. I even said super, to her, thanks for being flexible. Super flexible. Then today at one he, or like around one, he texts me. He's like, hey, actually, things worked out. We could just still do it at one. And I just wrote back. What did I write back? I was like, she now goes, you're just. She goes, now annoying. you're being annoying. I'll see you at two, motherfucker. It's like, OK, <laughs> OK, sorry. <laughs> it was so funny because I was like, wow, this really is the story of what it is to be my friend. Like one uh. day you'll reach out and I'll be like super nice and like accommodating. And then the next day, whether I don't it had nothing to do with you. I was just in the middle of like too many people texted me at the same time. And I just started lashing out at all of them. <laughs> like it was like <laughs> and you, you know what she did. You know what she did? She sent the the sideways crying emoji like that makes it better. Like, I'm uh, just kind of joking. Like, no, you're being a fucking bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I totally get that, though. Like, I'll, I'll be accommodating once. And after yeah. that, heaven forbid. And as a matter of fucking fact, I know that you got somewhere to be at four. So I was like, maybe she'll want to go back to the original time because she's got shit to do. And she's like, well, no, motherfucker. I should have no. canceled the whole thing. Fuck Hold you on. and your special. The Don't go watch is, Rosebud Baker's shit. The truth shit. is, first of all, the truth is, I know a lot of people are out of work right now, but I'm not. Okay? <laughs> it's it's not the work. I'm like, I'm not just sitting around here. I got, I got shit, shit to, to do. do. I will say, I will say, uh, the first attempt I made to reschedule, I was like, can you just do it later in the day? And you were like, no, I've got a meeting. And I wrote back to the guys. I was like, she can't. She's got something to do. Like, what What the fuck is that about? <laughs> Who the fuck has stuff to do these days? What is this bitch? <laughs> I'm fucking working. Yeah. I, it's crazy. I mean, I know it's not like, it's not going to make me likable to say to this, but like. Rosebud, let me stop you right there. Me. You're never going to be likable, okay? Yeah. I, it's not. Let me say this. It's not been that bad of a year for me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I've been thinking about that. There, I want to write like a book or a fucking expose or something like all the people in the world who had a great 2020. Like I, I got married right people. before the pandemic. I got a promotion. We like we, my dreams came true and I'm going to look back and think 2020 was the best year ever. And those people are all like walking on eggshells. Like I can't say anything or I'm a bad person, but fuck that. Enjoy yourself. I know it's so funny. Cause I was listening to, uh, I was listening to the daily on, and it was like, we want to hear about your good news stories from 2020. And I was like, nobody's going to fucking call in no. to let you know about their good stories from 2020. Oh, call in right now. Give me the number. You <laughs> might as well. You might as well mail someone a knife and give them your address because it's <laughs> no one is going to want to listen to that. Could you imagine <laughs> if someone was like, well, you know, uh, COVID wiped out my entire family and I was unable to say goodbye to them at the hospital. And, you know, they just got they just got whisked away one day, put on a ventilator. And then I saw their dead body at the morgue. And, uh, yeah. you know, I lost I my to job hug the screen and uh, to but say I'm goodbye so, to my mom. I'm, I'm so happy that you got your promotion, though. Yeah, we want to hear yeah. that story. Right. I'm like, I made, I made a calendar this year. Pretty cool. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Here's our calendar. We got a calendar, Rosebud. How about that? <laughs> That's beautiful. Of all I'm of our idiotic, all of our idiotic statements. So you can you can get that. That makes that makes me happy. I like. I mean, I like seeing people succeed. I I do. Yeah, I, and I feel me like feel good. I feel like uh, I feel like this has been a big year. Probably like 2019 into 2020 for you. I feel like was when like things started to pop, right? Well, I felt like to 2018 to 2019 18. was a little bit. Uh, better in terms of like. Oh, okay. So you're failing now. You're on the downside. You're you're washed up. First of all, no, I'm making more money this year. Oh, that's all that matters. But it's all, but it's all, uh, it's not like public. You know what I mean? So it's all kind of like, and I kind of enjoy that more. Like I, I'm sort of enjoying it more. Wait, wait, hang uh, on. What, what does making, that mean? Because you're not on stage. Yeah, just yeah. writing. Right, like I'm right, making more right. money writing, okay. and it's been. I'm like, this is great because I don't have to put on makeup. I can stay in my pajamas. I can make check. Like I just, you know, it's not bad. And I can just fucking write jokes and get paid for them. What are you writing, like, writing for uh, like TV shows and shit or what? Yeah. 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 Do you so, do, do, do Does anybody write for other comics? Is that a thing? Will somebody like, will you write jokes for someone else to use on stage? 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Really? really? That's I feel like, like that's like, I don't know. I Like, why don't you just tell that joke on stage? Well, it's for people that, okay, so like, if somebody gets a hosting gig at like the Oscars, right? Oh, okay. They, got it. They're so big and they've got so many things going on that they're going to have, they're going to hire people to write jokes for I them. See, I see. In their but voice. You wouldn't do it for like another comic. I would. But yeah. Like, 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 like another comic, like, like, like if I was getting like, paid, I would do it. So like, you would, you would, I don't would, care. would you rather get paid? You know, if someone else was just like at like the New York City circuit of clubs telling your jokes but you got paid for it. You'd be cool with that. I'd be cool with it because here's, even if it was like my jokes, I'm, if I'm writing it for them, they're going to be jokes that I wouldn't tell. So it's just mm. like jokes aren't that fucking precious. I mean, I can come up with a joke easily. Oh, it's look the at jokes, me. I'm so funny. I'm just drowning are... in jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, I could write a, I'll write a joke for somebody else. The jokes that are like precious to me are jokes that I, uh, that are about my life and that are um, personal to me. Will, will you write joke, a, Would you write a joke like, uh, have you ever written for like, um, a, like a male from a male's point of view or something like that, where it's like I would never use, be able to really tell this anyway as a chick. So like, go ahead. Yeah. 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 I remember that, I, like uh, I, like Jay Z once wrote a verse for Dr. Dre. And it was all about like driving Bentleys and doing what Jay Z does. And Dr. Dre was like, "No, no, no, dude, I, we don't do that here on the West Coast." So he rewrote the whole thing in like Cadillacs and West Coast style. He's like, "All right, I'll write it however yeah. you fucking want it because I can just do this." Shit. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I think that there's jokes that I, you know, when it comes to like guys, there's <sighs> women can kind of get away with right with saying certain things on stage that men can't. Mm -hmm. You know, black comics can get away with saying things on stage that white comics can't. There's like all these things. Well, that what do you think like the hierarchy is? Because I think at the top is gay guys. They can say whatever the fuck they want in my mind. I think a uh, gay black trans person can yeah. get away with saying anything they fucking want. So it's just the more the more boxes you can check. What about like Native American? Yeah. Yeah, they got to be like the pinnacle. I can say whatever I want. There's only six right. of us left. <laughs> right. I mean, you got you got there's. It's a tricky time because, you know, you got to kind of like walk this line of like where, uh, you know, you can't come off as being you just have to be really smart about the jokes that you tell. If you're going to talk, if you're like a white woman, you have to be really smart about the jokes that you tell mm. about like cops and about the black community or about your role in that whole dynamic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and I'm kind of working on a bit right now <laughs> that is in the beginning stages that's sort of about that whole thing, about Just, white women and why we call the cops all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, give us a little color there. Why? I can't, why I can't yet. It's not ready. <laughs> that is, it's not ready. That is something that you to gotta it, nail. You gotta make I, sure every word yeah, is measured. I have to run that joke by every friend of mine who is black and make sure that they think it's funny. How about this? And, when you think something's funny... And you run it by, and they're like, no. But you yeah. really liked it as is. What do you do then? Because I've had that happen where I'm like, fuck. I thought, I, I asked you thinking I was absolutely going to get the okay. And I didn't yeah. get the okay. And now I'm pissed because I really want to tell that joke or write that line or whatever. I think, I usually just go, okay, they're right. Like, if it's yeah. if they're like, no, that doesn't work. That's, like, then I'm like, away. oh, the angles, I took the wrong angle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I'm but like, then, I've been thinking more. But like, you're wrong. You don't even get it. Never well, that's what I'm saying. I usually get offended. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm like, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. It just means that you took you took the wrong angle. Like, you have to think about it more. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, there's just, there's blind spots that I have that they don't. And so I have to just go, oh, okay, I guess I, I that's my blind spot, right, you know? Right. And I, and usually I'll ask, I'll be like, okay, well, what is it about it that doesn't work if I really don't know? Got it, got it. I, what annoys me is when they go, no, it's not funny. It's like, well, why? Yeah, yeah. Tell and me I why. go, okay, well, why not? Yeah. And then they t they explain it to me, and I I'll, I'll go, oh, okay, all right, got it. You know. How were um, um How were the holidays this year for you? I mean, I didn't even I didn't do anything for Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm going. I know it's treason, but I'm gonna go see my mom for Christmas. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's so like. <laughs> 
it is the weirdest fucking time. I just don't know, like, what the fuck. I, I feel like people are going to shit on me if I say I'm going to see my mom. But it's like my mom's 60. She's in Maine. She's like I, alone. I, you know, I, yeah. I, I want to see her. So I'm doing I'm getting tested all fucking week. I, mm. I'm going to Cleveland this weekend to do hilarities in, in Cleveland. And that I'm getting tested before I leave. Going to fucking quarantine while I'm there and then come back and test twice before I go home. And it's like fun. <laughs> Fun stuff. Yeah. Boy, I you mean, must really it? love your mom. That sounds like a lot. I feel like, sorry, mom. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> I I do. I feel like I don't. I Normally, I'm like, I won't go home for Christmas because I just feel like it's unhealthy to go home for Christmas, regardless of if there's a pandemic or not. Like, <laughs> I don't support uh, you, you, family you relationships. <laughs> what? <laughs> Speaking mentally or physically healthy? Mentally. I think mentally, mentally I and spiritually, it's wrong <laughs> to visit your family. I actually, I, for the first time this year, I, I am going home as well for Christmas. But this is the first time ever this year that I didn't go home for Thanksgiving. And yeah. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. Like, pretty enjoyable. Pretty it's not nice. bad. You know, you know what it the key good. is? The key is to have somewhere to go. And family to see if you were so inclined, but say right. no. Because when you don't have it, that's when you get like the holidays blues where you're like, oh my God, like I'm alone in this world and I'm going to die and blah, blah, blah. But right. it's like, well, I could go see a whole host of people who love me, but I can't because of like the, the, the pandemic. So then you just kick back and do whatever the fuck you want. Right. That's the good. I mean, that was, that was really the beautiful thing about getting married in the middle of all this was just like, Oh yeah, I can't have I can't invite my extended family for their own good. Mm-hmm. It's just it's for them. I'm protecting you know? them. Yes. You're right. so selfless, Rosebud. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm a hero. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. I mean, I remember praying for no the RSVP knows when I was getting married. Like we would literally yeah. open up like so and so said no. Yes, yes. save a few few dollars. So to be able yes. to just be like, boom, entire swaths of people gone. Oh my god. I would yeah. I would rush my wedding. I I almost want to propose right now to some random person, plan a wedding, and not invite people. The rush that you got to get from that. Oh fuck. It's amazing. And then you fucking put together a website with pictures so that you you've included people, and you go, oh, and here's our registry in case. Buy me shit. Yeah. <laughs> You're not gonna make it, but buy me a mixer, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like the best part of this year uh was just like how it's forced it's caused this like forced reflection for so many people, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Like you're alone with your thoughts and you have to everyone that I know has had to um face something about their life that wasn't working Mm -hmm. and like have to change it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's entire friendships that I had that this year I just went ew to Nope. like off off the list. Done. Done. Like no, I, and not, it wasn't in a, you know, like cutting them off or like, it wasn't like that. It was just like, Oh, okay. I'm going to let this die. (laughs) It's like a, a plant that you just don't water, you know? Yes. Like, I'm just going to let this wither slowly Mm -hmm. and die. Yeah. Yes. And the beautiful thing about it is that nobody has, like, called me and been like, hey, I miss you, which is, (laughs) I I think. the beautiful part. (laughs) Well, yeah, it's a further, it's further, um, it just confirms that it wasn't working in the first. Like, I'm like, okay, this was mutual. (laughs) <laughs> See, I I almost feel like my ego would come into play, and I'd be like, "Huh, that motherfucker doesn't even miss me, huh?" All right, let's see how it is. Like, what? What? You don't let you don't miss this. You don't want this in your life. <laughs> you don't want all this. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, we lost uh, Fidel. Bur- oh, there he is. He's back. You back fights? Yeah. Well, well I'm gonna fights cut him is- out of my world next. Leave that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Behind. Uh, you know, see you later. Fights just listened to that and decided this was the moment. I guess. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so you got new shit coming out or what? What's cooking up for the for the rest of the month? Yeah. So I've got um a Comedy Central digital set coming out uh December twenty third. Okay. And that'll be on CC Stand Up's Instagram. Um we did a COVID uh COVID show, like a COVID friendly show. We're well, not COVID 
COVID friendly sounds bizarre. Um, yeah, it's like me and me and COVID. We, 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 it was a super spreader event. We all coughed on each other, and uh, yeah, we were COVID friendly, yeah. meaning we were just gathered <laughs> in a where small did space. You, where did you do it? Like, what was the setting? Um, it was actually on an in an outdoor area in yeah. Brooklyn, and we we all, there was like seven of us on the show. Um, Andy's set came out today. He was on it too. And it was, it was basically just like all the material that we've gotten since this whole thing started. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just basically like, what are the new jokes you have try? And it was the first time a lot of us had been on stage, uh, in months. So that was cool. Did you have a lot of rust? Because uh, we were talking to Gabriel Iglesias and he was like, he got up, I think he said for the first time in eight months, and he was like, I fucking sucked. Like, it was bad. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. shit, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like uh, it's very tough to kind of... I mean, I was getting up every night for a while during the pandemic, like, just doing outdoor shows. And they were fine. It wasn't... It's just not a friendly... It's not great for no, comedy, like no, outdoors. No. Like we used to complain about how the ceilings weren't low enough in a comedy. That's what we were club. just mm. we were just talking about that with Sam. Yeah, yeah. and it's like now you're <laughs> screaming under the sky. Yeah. Like it was just, and the laughs kind of like just go. Yeah, up. yeah. So like we we were just talking about Sam's special, and I think I mean he had a couple jokes that I thought were like fucking money, and it did get a laugh, but it didn't sound the way it should have. And I would right. imagine when you've you know done seven nights a week, 25 sets a week for the last, you know, million years the way you guys have where you come, you get accustomed to like uproar and like loud laughter. It just sounds yeah. like, ugh, you know, that's the it thing. almost sounds ruder. Yeah, just, it's, a, it's like a smattering of, of applause where it's just like, ha, yeah. ha, ha. It's like, oh, <laughs> yes. fuck. But that's yes. really how it, you know, it's how it sounds unless you're trapped in like a little tiny comedy club that's designed for it. So I get it. Yeah. And it's it's crazy because. I, I would walk away from shows and and then feel awful. Like I was like, even if the set went well and I saw them enjoying themselves, I would just feel so fucking sad. It's like hooking up with somebody after a breakup, you know, just to get your mind off of it. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, this th this it. isn't it. Yeah. Like this, this ain't it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And that is what it felt like every time I got on stage. And for a second, I'm just coming back now from like three weeks where I was just like, I can't get myself to do it. I can't get myself to go yeah. down to the cellar or go to like an outdoor show. I just can't fucking get myself to do it because I would be depressed on the way there and then I'd be depressed on the way home. Yeah. And I, you know, it is well, what it is. If it's any consolation from a, a viewer's side of it, I kind of came like full circle where like in the beginning, if I saw... People uh, on the back of a pickup truck or doing a drive-in show or in the park. I was kind of like, "Ooh, like they're they're stooping that low, huh?" But yeah. then, but then, it, first of all, it went on so long. Second of all, like you got to get those jokes off because if you tell the pandemic jokes like when you're back in the club in a year, those don't fucking work. So I wanted right. to hear some of the the comedy that you guys were coming up with during the time, and then also it just got to be normal where it was just like, "Okay, I'm gonna watch this set on a on a rooftop," and it's like. It's just as funny. It might not sound the same, feel the same, whatever, but the the level of humor is still there. So it's probably yeah. a lot in your head and just what you're used to hearing because it's not like you guys became not funny all of a sudden. No, I mean, what it is is we just had to, it was like, oh, I'm doing this because it makes sense to do it, not because I'm enjoying myself. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I used to get, I used to have this like excitement when I would go to the club and I would have a new joke and I'd be able to tell it. That doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. I go and I do I do my set and if it works, it works, but it's not going to feel great. Even if it's like, you know, even if the response is nice, it's just not, it's not going to feel the same. So honestly, also, it became work again. It's really what yeah. you're describing. It's like I had to do this thing that I don't really enjoy, but I had to do it for money and for my career. So, yeah. yeah, for sure. And also just to stay, to stay in shape. Mm -hmm. It's like, you got to just stay in shape. We forget that this is if you stop doing it for any long period of time, you get back on stage and you're like so wobbly and like your timing is fucked. And God, it's just brutal. Like <laughs> and you can't deny it. Like you can't be like, 
oh yeah, the audience fucked up that one. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's your fault, you know. I was actually watching you uh, on your YouTube, and, and like, you must have been one of the last people to be on the cellar, right? It, it was so weird seeing. It was one of your. It was like it was so weird. The date was like water imposed or watermark on it, and it was like February twenty eighth, twenty twenty. Would that have made sense? Something like that, where it's like it was weird seeing someone on stage in a club doing and like with the year being 2020 because i was like i forgot we were ever even open at all you know what i think that i think that set was actually february of 2019 and i just put the date wrong in the thing (laughs) that makes sense (laughs) but it was still you asked no i don't know when it was (laughs) it was like december of 20 december of 2019 so it was right right before i left for la and i was and that was you know i it was one of my last sets for sure. Cause I was yeah. like, you, you know, I remember asking Liz to send me that tape. Liz is uh, the manager at the comedy seller and she sent it to me and I was like, uh, do you have any more of them? Like, do you have any, cause I knew the pandemic was happening and I was like, I just need more material to like release. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I'm sorry, we don't like, those are the, that's it. Yeah. That's what we got. I can't get back into the thing because we're oh, not shit. open. Yeah. So I was like, fuck. Um, Cause, and it wasn't a good set either. Like it was like, I liked oh. the set. I liked the set. And I feel like everyone that's watched it on YouTube has loved it, but they've all been like, fuck that audience. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I thought the same exact thing. Like, mm-hmm. like in particular, there's one part where you're talking about your sister who passed away. And as someone who like, I also lost someone like my best friend when I was young and like, I always make jokes about it and it always makes everyone really uncomfortable. Yeah. And you're like, fuck you. These aren't your traumas. It's selfish not to laugh with me. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, I was like, Oh, I very much get that. You suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel, I, I mean, that's, I love doing shit like that, but obviously Joe like that don't do well under patio lights. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like, everybody's trying to have a nice afternoon and I'm sitting in the middle of central park, just like shouting abortion jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the set itself looks like a Taylor Swift music video where you have like Christmas lights kind of hanging around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, I got yes. a diva cup stuck in me. <laughs> <laughs> I legit had one set this summer in Central Park where I was telling a joke about abortion and I heard a child laugh when it was over. <laughs> <laughs> the laughter of like, babes. <laughs> there is there is something about like if you if you do if comedians do what you do at night where there's alcohol being served in a dark place, it's funny. You do that yeah. exact thing in the, the light of day under the sun, you become a crazy person. That's that's yeah. what differentiates you between like the crazies in the park. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean I, truly, I I there was no mic. There was a period of time where there were no mics just available. <laughs> You were just yelling under a tree. So you guys get abortions or what? <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, sorry, I'm like trying to, I'm trying to quit vaping. So if people are watching this and they, and I'm like moving my mouth around, I'm not on cocaine. It's just these fucking nicotine lozenges. I'll tell um, you what, Robert Downey Jr. had the same excuse on Letterman the other night. Yeah, <laughs> he, did. he did. He's just chopping away at his suspicious. gum. Yeah. This is on both of you. Yeah. I'm like, well, it, leave it to two addicts to be like, yeah. everyone's going to think that I relapsed. What a, what a great little ploy that is. Just walk around with your lozenges. Not on Coke, I swear. Yeah. Not. I'm I'm just, fine. Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, wait. How are but, the um, how are the street toughs hanging out on your stoop? The stoop kids. Oh, the teens? Yeah, the teens. I haven't seen the teens lately. Mm, do they finally um, scatter? They finally, maybe they're dead. Maybe they caught it and died. I'm kind of hoping that they did. Uh, no, they're, I, I have no idea where they are. I hope that their parents fucking grounded them. Um, but they, they haven't been around. And now what we've got is this guy named uh, Bob or something who's homeless. He's a homeless vet that Andy has befriended. Mm. And I'm pretty sure that he shit in our flower uh, in the, by the tree in our flower pot. Um, Dude, well, you know, was, what would you pre- you prefer that or just like the fucking ground? You know, I mean, yeah, I, I understand. Fertilizer. It was like I can see how it how he did it that way. You know, he looks like he's sitting on the edge of the you know the little fences yeah. where they say like curb your dog. He probably just sat on one of those, pulled the back of his pants down, and let it go. Where but would you my shit if you were homeless? Hmm, that's a really good question. I feel like I've seen them uh, multiple times in my life, probably like three total. 
I've seen them in between cars, parked cars. Yes. Which seems, they always pick that. What is that about? Maybe I don't like, know because I'm like, like that's a, a very obvious. On. Yeah, I don't know. It's like oh, they're you know shitting between cars. That's what the homeless do, and I, I, it doesn't seem like it would be the best of choices. I don't know. Well, you know Baby. what I think. You know what it tells me is that when uh, maybe given what they have to eat, maybe every shit is an emergency. Right, like you I know just gotta I mean? go right now. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I feel Baby. like. If you are shitting between cars, it was an emergency. Yeah. And that's, I've watched a guy shit between cars. I was sitting inside of New York Comedy Club and he was shitting between cars. We were all watching him in the window. We were all just like, huh. <laughs> and then he grabs, <laughs> he just grabbed newspaper out of the air. Like it was blowing <laughs> by and he fucking caught the newspaper and just wiped his ass. That's, I mean, that's actually pretty impressive to me. Yeah, that's snatching it out of the air, like all in one motion. That guy's a it professional. Was, I mean, I was like, this is artistic. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> Dude, this there is- was one time I had, I had myself a Bob back when I lived in Boston still. And I, I was leaving the, uh, uh, I was going to work one day and like, yeah. we only had one door in the building. So I had to go out that door and it was like, had an entryway that he'd kind of, he'd gotten in the entryway, but he couldn't get into the building itself. So he was just laying down in the entryway with his pants pulled halfway down his like quads mm-hmm. and just he was unconscious and just shit was pouring out of his ass. Like uh, I watched it happen. Uh, wow. It was like, I was like, wow. I guess this is an emergency. But I just had to step over a guy mid shit uh, to get so I could go to work that day. That's unbelievable. So wait, it just it just leaked out like tears. Like is it that- was. It was just a pile, like it was still on his cheeks, oh. and it was just a pile of shit around, like at the base of his cheeks. Wolf. It was, it was That's, horrific. It's New York, but also baby. the answer for where you, no, I was in Boston at the time. I oh, all family. right, even better. Um, but the uh, the answer where you shit, you're homeless. I feel like not enough people use this or employ this tactic. You can go in ho- hotels. Mm. Yeah, well, I I mean oh. I think that works for a little while. I would imagine at some point. They got wise to that. And as soon as the homeless guy wrapped up in a moving blanket shows up, they're like, you're not pooping here. You're not pooping here. Get the fuck out. No, they're like, that's Lenny Kravitz. We just give him penthouse. But it's, I think Starbucks, Starbucks yeah. is probably good for that. Yeah. Uh, although yeah. they've started, you know what I used to do? And I, I, this is a homeless move, but I did it anyway, is I used to keep bathroom codes in my phone of certain wow. places in the city wow. so that I could be like, oh, that that deli over there has a bathroom. I could just walk in the back and then I'd save the code so I wouldn't have to buy anything. That's this was when I first... Great. Rosebud. That is this super, was- <laughs> super gross for you to do, but yeah. very, like, savvy, you know? Like, that... that- <laughs> That's what th- those are the lengths that you'll go to when you're first starting comedy and you have no fucking money yeah. and you're like, well, if I got to go to the bathroom and I'm near a club, but I, but I'm I too can't far to walk back. $2 then I know. Yeah. 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 Say, no you wonder 2020 has been a great year for you. The bar was on a fucking floor. <laughs> the, b- <laughs> the bar was incredibly low. I don't have Just a public so- restroom scam going right now. So we a pretty good year. <laughs> yeah. It's let me let, put it this way. It's easy for me to be grateful. <laughs> uh, we, we speaking of just like discussing deplorable things in New York, I'm going to hold this up to the screen. I hope you can kind of get a gist for it. This, okay. this, our coworker was on, he went to the bodega, oh, walking yeah. back to his apartment. And I've, I mean, I've been in New York forever. I feel like I've seen it all when it comes to the homeless and the rats and just the, the everything. This is a, a rat who has been, yeah, like hung, like lynched with like, oh a, my a God, cord hanging from some scaffolding. What the fuck? Yeah. And I, I mean, that's what I love about it is that. It moves the needle even for, like, New Yorkers who have seen it all. Like, I saw that, and I was like, oh, mama, that is some shit I've never seen before. That is, that's the most disturbing fucking thing I've seen in a long time, dude. He said he was walking and had his head down texting and, like, looked up at the last second, or he would have just, like, walked into a dangling (laughs) rat. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, my God. Imagine you're walking by and just, (laughs) and it just, like, the rat hits your face. I would, would, would shave my face off. Oh, I would chop my head right it. off. I would chop my I head right of off. 
Dude, I one time was walking in on the Upper West Side and I was wearing flip flops. I haven't worn sandals or flip flops since in the city. I was just walking by a tasty delight and I'll never fucking forget it. I felt something on my foot. I looked down. A rat was walking over my bare foot and I screamed and looked around at everyone. And I was like, nobody's going to do anything. Nobody. I just, but that is like, if I had seen that, that would, I mean. And move. I mean, that that's enough. Could you imagine we, if you're, you know, you are. Like a 22 year old girl, and you move to the city, and you think it's gonna be Sex in the City, martinis, and high heels, and you go and you bought some shitty apartment in a shitty neighborhood, and the first thing you see is a fucking a lynched rat. <laughs> Honestly, that is actually. I hope that. I hope a lot of 20 year olds saw that. Like yeah. 20 year old musical theater majors. I hope they saw that. <laughs> like this is, I mean, that's this is your choice. That's the origin story of a Marvel super uh, villain. Mm-hmm. Like. That's just yeah. like, that's something someone so twisted would do. Yeah. That, like, yeah. like and, and and Bailey, uh, another kid who works with, actually replied and he said, "Oh, that might be like where I live in Brooklyn because what they do, his neighbors do, is they kidnap. They're not kidnap. They catch rats in cages and then electrocute them." What the fuck? You gotta be like, like you should literally call the police on those people. Yeah, You're because that that is the making animal. That's the making of a supervillain. You stop. You gotta stop them now. That's what serial killers do. They microwave cats and they kill things, and then eventually they need the they got the thirst for human blood. So when there's That's, like a, another serial killer on the loose, it's the fucking NYPD's fault for not getting the rat killers. No <laughs> shit. No shit. I I totally. I agree. Like whoever fucking did that, I want the cops to find them. Yeah. Like I want. They should investigate I, that. They should be like dusting for fingerprints and shit. Yeah, that is um, that is a person who will kill people. Yeah, like <laughs> absolutely. Did you that see is uh, terrifying? Uh, don't fuck with cats. The the guy who like killed the fucking hamsters. I couldn't. But that's I couldn't. But that's you know that's the same shit. He took this time to. Could you imagine? I'm I'm going to assume he killed the rat too. And then you sit there and you just like get out a, I don't know, a cord or a piece of yarn and you're just like tying a little bow or a little fucking knot around the neck and you throw it up over the top. I mean, I mean, if he, if he did it, I hope he did it right. At least he got, you still got to do the noose. If you're tying it in a bow, that's almost a little too whimsical for a murdered rat. <laughs> I like a fucking well, boy scout that's the part that makes it fucking creepy that's the part that makes it serial killer worthy is like if he ties a bow around it that means he thinks it's a gift mm-hmm. yeah. Like, yeah. nice little presentation Ugh. I, I can't deal with people that fucking hurt animals I can't fucking deal with them yeah, I'd rather like, you kill I, a person you know I'm like a, I mean obviously it's because it's symbolic of what they could do to people but like a fucking helpless and I just God mm-hmm. damn it. Mm-hmm. I I hate those people so much. And and, and, and and also like rats are my like I have a problem with rats. Mm-hmm. And if you and I still have a problem with the person killing a rat in this manner. Like yeah. I, I think rats should be wiped off the face of the earth. And yeah. still I'm like, well, this is over the line. But let's do it humane. Right. You know, let's yeah, yeah. <laughs> let let's get you know what is pretty crazy? Old school like mouse traps that just like whap and just like break a fucking mouse's neck, just flap. Like that is that's yeah. some that's some dark shit too. But let's go with that. I don't need you fucking tying anybody up and hanging them over scaffolding. I remember hearing this story of somebody that used one of those glue traps for ma- for mice, but like didn't realize that the glue doesn't kill them, and that then you have to kill the the mouse. This guy, and this guy it, caught like mouse the size of fucking dogs, and they're screaming and like. I like, got rosebud. I I lived in a basement. Actually, I lived in this is the same apartment that the guy's shit in. Um <laughs> and uh, makes sense and. I came home one night and I lived like, I lived like below ground. So it yeah. was pitch, pitch black. Yeah. I came home one night and like if there, there weren't windows. It was a, a very depressing time in my life. And, uh, it was like, I just walked into my apartment. So there are no lights on. There are no windows. It's just pitch, pitch black until I get to somewhere where a light like, could be on. Yeah. And I hear the loudest squeals and screams and I had forgotten I put the glue trap out. So I was just like, what the fuck is this cacophony of noise? Shrieking. That, like, yeah. it, is, it is just like just like I'm piercing my eardrums. And I turn the lights on. I see this fucking glue trap in the middle of my bed, uh, my middle of my kitchen. There's like seven of them on there. And yeah. they're all eating each other's legs so they can get out of the glue. What the fuck? Yeah, your le- <laughs> yeah. I mean, imagine your leg is they're like non- <laughs> So they, they could run away. off their own legs. Mm. 
And then so I get a snow shovel. And there was like a, I had a glass sliding door that opened up into an alley. And I got a snow shovel and just kind of like a lacrosse stick, just threw them as far as I could. <laughs> landed you in the middle of the road. Them? Yeah, they landed in the middle of the road and got like run over shortly thereafter and like remained pressed into that pavement until I moved out. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> Fights that's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> I know. I know. Never again. Wait. And, and, then, and then I stopped even trying to kill them. I could hear them in my cabinets, and I would just turn my TV up. I don't, I tell- I'm not going through that again. <laughs> That's so fucked up. Can I tell you guys a story that I've been, I forgot. I was like, I'm dying to tell this story on like a bigger podcast because it's, it's not funny, but it's fucking interesting. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. So a couple weeks ago, this is basically, all right, well, whatever. A, a couple weeks ago, I get a call from my agent. He's like, hey, do you want to uh, do a corporate tonight? And I was like, yeah, how much does it pay? He was like, it's, you know, seven, 75 uh, million dollars, 7,500 or whatever. And I was like, yeah, 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 for sure. I'll do it. Uh, they put me in a car that night. It was out in Connecticut. And um, and so I go out there and it's for the CEO. And the CEO is on the lawn of this Connecticut house. And I go down in the back and he's wrestling celebrities like this is how billionaires are dealing with the pandemic just you know <laughs> would, would this be someone like, we would know if you said the name or is it just like a no-name businessman who's like got a zillion dollars he's he's very well he's y- you'll it was jeff Bezos. let me just okay, let me finish yeah. the story and you'll find out <laughs> okay okay so it's this fucking billionaire like ceo he's wrestling celebrities on his lawn david arquette is there um, just fucking Makes sense. Yeah. just the craziest yeah. shit. And I'm like, these people are so fucked up. Like everyone there is like fucked up. Like, and I'm, I'm a drug addict. So like normally when I see somebody like, I'm like, okay, that's cocaine. That's heroin. That's crack. That's Molly, whatever I can, I can pinpoint what everyone's on. Mm-hmm. This was like, I don't know what anyone is on right now. Like I can't pinpoint what drugs are like in these people's systems. And, and it was bizarre. Cause I was like doing my set. I did 45 minutes and I was supposed to do an hour, but at 45 minutes, I was like, well, no one is that like, like everyone's out Earth. of their mind. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I was like, they think it's been three days. Like I could just, <laughs> so, um, and everyone like, like the guy, the CEO was like grabbing things from like, next to the stage and like putting them in people's laps and being like, keep that there. Don't leave it. Like, and then like rearranging shit as I was on stage and I was like, and everyone was acting like it wasn't happening. So, so I was like, okay, I guess we're supposed to pretend that this insanity isn't going on. (laughs) I get off stage. He's got a three wick candle in his lap, balancing it on his knee. Right. It's lit. All the, all the wicks have fused together to create this massive flame. And he's playing the side of it with two long barbecue lighters, right? Just like playing drums on the side of a lit candle with two lighters. And I was like, okay, well, this is bad. I got to get out of here. You know what I mean? Yeah. I said, they were like, you can stick around. And I was like, "Uh, that's, that's all right. I'm going to, I'm going to go home. (laughs) And I, I got my check and I just fucking left. But I walked in the house and I turned to Andy and I was like, and he goes, what was it? He goes, how was it? I was like, that guy's going to die. I was like, that guy is fucking like, you know, I've seen addiction and that's what it looks like at the very fucking end. And, um, and then like two weeks goes by and I get this article from the, one of the wrestlers, right? The wrestler that was there, who was the only other paid entertainment. And he, uh, and I, I click, I open the article and it's like, Former CEO of Zappos, Tony Shi, dies in house fire. Mm, no way. Yep. And it was like, I, I was like, holy yeah, fuck. The and dude I looked, who was playing the drums on the three wick candle. <laughs> Burn that <Yep>. shit down. <laughs> I holy look at the fucking, shit. I look at the fucking uh, picture of the house. And I was like, that's the fucking house. Wow. And the house was not, but the house wasn't burned. Like nothing had happened in the house. So I was like, the house looks the exact same as it did. And I, I was like, that's weird. So, and then like more shit started coming out about it. And it turns out that he had locked himself in the shed 
And it was like seven days after I had done this gig, but it was from candles and like nitrous. Like, I guess he was doing a bunch of nitrous and fucking set himself on fire, died nine days later from like the burns or whatever. But the house itself. Oh, so he survived and was like in the hospital for nine days? Yeah. And it was like, oh my fucking God. Like, I just, I, I remember being like, thank fuck. I got the fuck out of there. Thank God I got my check before that happened. Well, yeah. (laughs) And, you know, part of me was like, I probably should have asked for more money. But, um, (laughs) but like, (laughs) it's fucked up. That is, we we had a conversation probably a couple months ago about spontaneous combustion because some people believe in that. And like, no, it's usually like some guy who was out of his fucking gourd playing with yeah. candles and set everything on fire and there's just no more evidence. That's that's what happened here. Yeah. I mean, that and it's is, like ugh. it's so fucked up because these people have so much money and everyone around them is like, you're such a genius. You're such a genius. And I was like, this guy's a drug addict. Yeah. Like, he's right, fucking right. he's fucked up. You guys are like not saying anything because he's you're on his payroll. But like. <laughs> You're you're a bad friend. Like you need to like help him. Money, you know? man. There's there's not a was, normal motherfucker who's like that rich. Everybody who gets that rich, you got it. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't die in a shed fire, but right. you you're not normal. You know. Yeah. It's not, it's not I mean, possible. I was like, this is fucking crazy. What's, I, and what's I, the perfect amount of money? How much money do you, do you want? If I could, if you could have a certain dollar amount in your bank account right now, do you want it to just be as high as humanly possible, or would you like? It's, it kind of sounds silly, but you know what I mean? Like, do you want to be a billionaire? Would you actually want that? Or would or would you be cool with, you know, 50 million, 100 million? I mean, I would love to be a billionaire. I'll give it a I'd shot. Fucking, right? I'd, yeah, I'm not going to say no to it. <laughs> I you mean, know? you know, it's like, if I, if I, if, if you could have the choice between you, you have $1 billion, but mm-hmm. you are a CEO of some company. I don't know. So you're, you're frontward facing, you still have responsibilities. It's high pressure, all that right. shit. Or you yeah. could live like you're, you're still like a comic, but you've got like 10 million in the bank. So you're oh, still 10 like, million. 10 million is great. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You're still set and good. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I again, I would probably still give the Billy a whirl, but there's probably something to be said for just like, you and you know your 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 very close ones, or if you have kids, are set, and you don't have like the most pressure in the world. Yeah, I feel like the problem with um, that level of wealth is that it makes you feel invincible. Mm-hmm. Like it, you know what I mean. And I I get scared of my own ego, like my own ego, and the way that it would respond to having that much power terrifies me. You know, because yeah, I, like, I look would... what you did to me with our fucking scheduling today. You were wielding an iron, <laughs> you were ruling with an iron fist over one little bit of power. Are you kidding me? You give Rosebud a billion. <laughs> She'll be like a dictator. You'll run a whole yeah, country. But that was, but that was also just because I like giving you shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know. There's like a part of me that really enjoys just giving people shit. Yeah. Well, and... I know. Think about that. So now, now you can give everybody shit if you're a billionaire. There's not like, you know, you walk yeah. into 99.99999% of rooms in the world and you are the guy, the girl who can give out shit to anybody. Yeah, yeah you, I mean... You hire 90s actors and you like hit that guy with a chair real quick. Yeah. Right. That's the thing. And everybody would do is that it. David, is that what David Arquette was yeah. doing at the party? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, like, like, like David Arquette undoubtedly had to be there because he was once the WCW world champion and they were like restaging that fight because but I, why I not? Do feel, I feel bad though because I know that they were like close and I feel like that was one of the last times that they like got to hang out. You know, like I DM'd David afterwards and I was like, I'm, I'm really sorry for your loss you know and he he said the sweetest thing he was like i i really will never forget like what that night was like and how fun it was and i was like well i'm pretty sure you've already actually forgotten forgot. but <laughs> but also you know. therein lies but the, the pieces problem. that you remember i'm sure you meant you know and yeah. i like but and i really you know, thought if, if he you was, can't if you can't see that that night is what led <laughs> to the shed burning down <laughs> you were probably part of the problem i feel <laughs> i feel really yes yeah that's you're not wrong. Uh, but I also feel this like kind of um, I just I feel a lot of compassion for people like that because, you know, just because I've gotten sober doesn't mean that like I, I 
I can still see why those people are in the place that they're in because it's like they're still using drugs and alcohol. And so they can't see. It's not mm-hmm. just that they won't. It's that they literally can't see what's going on, mm-hmm. you know? And so I feel... And there's a lot of people dealing with that right now with the fucking pandemic and everything. Like people are fucked up right now. They Not are. Good. They're locked in their homes and they're they're the mice. They're the mice. They're, they're trapped on the glue trap. Legs. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? That's a that's what, thought, that's but it's what so it's starting true. to feel like. And that's that's where, you know, like the shutdowns, it's like I get it. But there are so many more implications that the people who are just like, well, you know, lives need to be saved. So you have to shut it down. It's like there's a lot more to it than that, man. Yeah, it's a it's a complicated fucking tricky situation. And I don't I don't disagree with anything that scientists are saying. I know that what they're saying works. But and at, and at the same time, it's not but but it's like and yeah. I also know that people are really suffering and that uh, they're sacrificing a lot of their well-being to benefit others. Well, also, and, too, it depends on like what kind of life you've lived is like. You know, being in clubs and in the, the night scene your whole life and in comedy and being and going through it yourself. You've been around it a lot. You've seen a lot of drugs. You've seen a lot of like the bad side of things when, you know, a scientist over here or a, a, a wealthy person who's lived, you know, they're like, why can't you just like stay at home? Why can't we? What's the big deal? It's like you don't you don't even know what that side, the other side of the tracks is like where it's not that easy to just say, oh, I'll just stay home. Right. It's like that's, it, you know. The way that we make our money is crowds like we Mm -hmm. have to be. And a lot of people in comedy, that's how they stay fucking sane. Mm -hmm. You know, like I I've one thing I've noticed is I was like, oh, shit. Like I I don't just do this because I love it. Like it fucking keeps me sane. Right. Tim Dillon Mm -hmm. was saying he like kind of swapped one addiction for the other where he just like got up on stage, you know, a zillion times a week. And if you don't have that. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm surprised that uh, you or Andy have not killed the other person yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for the uh, like murder suicide. Uh, well, at least New we'll York get City on Netflix. Comic couple. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you guys, you want to get famous and get your Netflix specials and all that? <laughs> murder suicide. Just do it. We just need one fucking documentary. Uh-huh. I don't care who has to die. <laughs> you know what? I could, when, what a sweet moment that would be is you two sitting there like flip a coin. It's like, sorry, Rosebud. You know, it's you. Ah, I stab you in the face. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, well, there. make sure the dogs are happy. <laughs> you know, I it's love crazy. It. So, it's uh, crazy. this Comedy Central special you said is on the 23rd, right? Yep, that's coming out on the 23rd on uh, CC Stand-Up's Instagram. So it's a digital set. Um, and then uh, I, I was a writer for Michael Che's new sketch show, and that's coming out um, later on this year. Uh, actually, probably in 2021. Um, and then that'll be on HBO Max. And then uh, what else? Oh, Find Your Beach podcast. Find your beach. You can listen to me and my white husband. Um <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start describing everything like that. My, my, you, I mean, my white girlfriend. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Queen, for accommodating <laughs> and gracing us with your presence coming down from your ivory tower. No, thank you guys for having me because you know that I texted you being like, when do I get to come on again? Yeah, um, yeah you did. That's right. I want that to be known. It should be known. Yes. You're right. No, but we always um, love having you. So anytime you I want. love seeing you guys. It's good that you're good, doing good. And uh, and I hope that Fights gets out of his apartment before this is over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I Rosebud. don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep him there. Just fucking keep him. See you later. <laughs> Thank you, Rosebud. Bye, Great guys. to see you. Bye. 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 All right. Big shout out to uh, Rosebud for telling that story about a guy burning alive in a shed. <laughs> Jesus I love Christ. That story. Two weeks I ago. Two, two weeks ago, John. John, do you know that was two weeks ago? That was very recent. That guy just burned alive. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just And, and yeah. Nick says he saw her, her story that night on Instagram. She was like, this is wild. David Arquette's here and like everyone's on drugs. This is wacky. And then a couple days later, dude's fucking dead. Oh, I do remember that story. That's where she took a picture and like she was in the back seat. And it was like, crazy. it was like, this is weird. And she was like, she, she did clarify. She's like, just to be clear, like, it's not weird, weird. Like I've done weirder gigs than this, but it's, it's up but there. It is like, <laughs> it, but it's odd <laughs> for she, Rosebud I, I to she, say that, you know, she's seen some shit. 
I think she was just saying that, like, I think people, like, started to, like, think, like, oh, she's in danger. She's like, I'm not right, in danger, right. but it's just weird. But it's wacky, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk to Brian Austin Green now. You've heard the name a lot in the news recently. He's kind enough to sit down with us. Uh, it's brought to you by the NHTSA, the uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The NHTSA talking about their impaired driving campaign. Uh, listen. You're a fucking asshole. If you're drunk driving, that should be, you know, when they say like, simple. like they have all their slogans, like if you don't click it, you get a ticket and like all those things. There should be one on the highway that says, if you're drunk driving, you're a fucking asshole. Hey. There should be a new slogan. If you're drunk driving, you're, you're a selfish, you're a selfish, bad person. Okay. I would love to say a lot more than that. I'd like to use a few more choice words, but I think NHTSA wants to keep it clean. You don't need any of the, the corny slogans. If you don't click it, you get a ticket or whatever. It should just say, if you're drunk driving, you're a bad person, you're a shitty person, and you deserve all the worst things to happen to you in life. There's just no other I mean, way around 2020. it. Come on. 2020. Like, get get there's, a Lyft. There's get an so Uber. Many other ways call a taxi. Drunk and driving. Get an Airbnb and just stay the night. Go to right. hotel tonight and just crash somewhere. There's a million ways to get around needing to drive drunk. So the bottom line is if you've had a couple drinks, you're impaired. If you feel a little funny, you're impaired. If you even have to question it, I feel like the moment you go like, wait a minute, have I? That probably means it's too many. I probably, right. you know, like if it's if it's like a sip or a, like a half a beer, you know you're good. Anything to the point where you're like, wait a minute, should I? Should I not? You just shouldn't. Have a DD. Use any of the apps we just talked about. Find any other way to make sure you don't get behind the wheel. Because not only could you kill yourself, not only could you kill other people, but even if you just get pulled over, your life is ruined. You got to go to court. You got to spend money. You lose your job. You lose your friends. You lose your family. Or you got a record. It's just, there's just way too many negatives for no positives. Best case scenario is just like, I get home. It's not even like you gain anything, you know? So yeah, there's, there's much safer ways to do it. Especially with the holiday season, we're like, there are other people out there who might be drunk driving. Like, not, don't, don't even want to be on the road with them. Just right. be safe. Stay it's off. Simple. Right. So uh, that's the move. Drive sober or get pulled over. If you feel different, you drive different. Uh, and so make sure you're not a jerk this holiday season. Let's talk to Brian Austin Green. What's going on? How are you, dude? Can you grab me one too, Nick? Uh, pin video. How are you, dude? I, you know what? I was going to wear my uh, my sweatshirt that you guys gave me. Oh, yeah? Well. Oh, fucking hoodie. It's, it's all we wear, man. <laughs> all I wear now is like my own, my own, it's like wearing <laughs> yeah, your own Yeah, you're band. way too dressed what up for quarantine. What the fuck's going on? Yeah, you got the. What was that? You're way too dressed up. Why? What are you doing here? Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this shit all day, man. Yeah. I got, I, I got you guys. I got like. Way more Fox shit. I got all sorts of press. Oh, okay. That was nice so of you to be they like, were like, you know, just, just, they so were like, know, hey, dress, dress up for dress. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> sorry. So, sorry to, uh, sorry to burst your bubble. I was just watching on YouTube a compilation of you dancing in the 90s, my friend. And it's glorious. Fucking glorious, right? It's Fucking amazing. Un yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. 90210. Yeah, no, I throw down. You've got the like the way too big baggy uh, button up shirt tucked in, and you're doing like the as vanilla ice. As everyone did yep. at that, at that yep. time. Yeah. You're absolutely. doing like the vanilla yeah. ice, uh, MC Hammer type of dance moves, and it is fucking spectacular, man. I think I had I think I had some dance moves from uh, New Kids on the Block yes. too that I had it felt I very much that way. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. When you're doing yeah. a scene like that, uh, is that is I mean I would be so fucking. You, embarrassed. you understand? Like, you're asking me a question like I just shot that scene <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> and that was thirty years 30 ago. Thirty right? years ago, but in general, <laughs> yeah, I just I just <laughs> want to make sure that we're clear <laughs> yeah. that, that you're on the right. Page, I just always that thought you're on the right. I, I, I that could you didn't never... jump in your DeLorean yeah. and like go back 30 years to when the show was made. No, I just think like when I when I see those scenes where someone has to sing or dance or perform in some way and, you yeah. know, there's a whole crowd there's you know, your cameraman and everybody just being like, OK, dude, like dance fucking sexy right. or serenade <laughs> this person like romantically. And it's like you're just yeah. you just have to do it. That seems impossible yeah. to me. Yeah. It, yeah. It sucked. It was uh, it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't natural at all. Yeah. I, I like the most unnatural shit to do are love scenes with people yeah, because they're like, they're not, 
people watch and they think like, oh man, you got to make out with so-and-so. And it's like, man, I did that like 30 times. And it was right. like, they were worried about lighting and making sure the head's the right way. And, you know, if we were doing scenes like in a bed, if you ever really look at them, like the pillows are all propped up in weird ways because you've got to make sure that you're seen by the cameras. It's, right. It's so, it's so unnatural. It's yeah. so unnatural. I yeah, like how crazy. you both worry about the embarrassment for be it dancing or lovemaking. And I'm always just like, man, I hope they only have to shoot that once because I don't have the stamina for a couple of scenes like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, if I got to hump you 30 times, guess what? Right, I'm, I'm going like, to need a nap. My back hurts. <laughs> <laughs> my, my knees are killing me. I really need to do this reconstructive surgery now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just fucking dripping sweat. Like, you're making it a little too real, John. <laughs> well, what's that right. like, though? They're you're not seeing my hair plugs, are you? <laughs> <laughs> there are definitely times too though when you're watching a movie that's like you can tell when someone's just kind of like all right that's a that's a movie kiss and then other times they're like going at it is that like you have maybe like an yeah. agreed upon thing with the girl or the guy being like yo hey we're gonna go after this one or like how come sometimes they look a little real and sometimes they look very very unnatural i think uh i think that depends on the situation like if i was if I knew I was going to be doing a scene with somebody that's seeing somebody that like everybody knows about, then you, then you, you slow it down a little bit. But if, if not, let it rip. you're single, you know, yeah. time to mingle, <laughs> time, to, time to throw down. So whenever there's these like, uh, you know, on set romance, I feel like that's, this is naturally going to happen. Right. I, if you're like, I, you're saying you're single, she's single. Like, well, and people always ask me, like, you know, why do you pick actresses or whatever? It's like, because that's the only place I go. Right. I don't. Yeah. Where else am I supposed to meet somebody? If I don't go to bars that, you know, yeah. if I don't surf, my chances of getting attacked by a shark are pretty slim. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, right. I, you know, that's, of course, I'm dating. That's the pool that I'm dating. And For I'm sure. dating in the pool that I'm around. No that's doubt. what that that's what it is for me. That was like a viral tweet on Twitter the other day. Like, reminder, like, don't date your coworkers. And I was like, that's the only people I've ever dated. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's, guess what? That's the only place that I go. Right, like, exactly. That, yeah. That's literally, that's the, those are the only people that I meet. And when I'm in public, I'm terrified to talk to new people. I have, right. like, you have to be forced to talk to me in order <laughs> to, to be remotely appealing. When I'm in appealing. public and I'm wearing this, like, bubble costume, it's really hard <laughs> to connect to anybody. <laughs> so what's, uh, what's up with the mask? Dancer. Uh, I mean, obviously, Mass Singer had, had tremendous success, and I we also just watched a clip of you uh, in that giraffe, that giraffe fit when you were <laughs> on, on the Mass Singer. That was in something. That, that super sexy clip of me <laughs> in the giraffe. I, bet, I yeah. bet all the girls were lining up after that one. <laughs> Mm. It's yeah, giraffe giraffes are a big buy this this Christmas <laughs> season. Um, I uh, the show is really fun, man. I, like I. Doing the doing this the the mass singer, I hadn't really watched the show a lot before then, and it's a really cool experience. Like being in being in the world of what I've done for so long. Like I've been an actor so long, and I've been I, I lost my anonymity so long ago that I just don't remember the point where I could go into a store and not think, oh. At one, at some point, somebody is going to go. Oh, hey, there's the guy from whatever. So, when you do a show, when you're a contestant on something like Singer, and you're in a costume, and all of a sudden you have your anonymity back, it's, cool. um, it's a really cool experience. And they they do it really well there. Like they, there were only maybe four people that knew it was me in the costume. There was the music supervisor, the person that I was doing my vocal training with. Uh, the executive producer and then the producer of the, of this season of the show. Everyone else referred to me as giraffe. <laughs> so like everywhere I walk, like on stages to do like photo stuff or whatever, they had only seen me in costume and I was only the giraffe from so everyone like director. Everyone was like, Oh, Hey, giraffes here. And I was like, you know, you're, you're all of a sudden you're you can't speak, right? So you're just you're like you know a Disneyland character. You're like in costume, doing all like the hand waves and the you know you're, you're yeah. miming everything you can. And uh, it's like you turn into a furry. Really, yeah, it's re 
I love that you threw it back to furry. <laughs> That's how they feel, You just man. cut your listening audience in half. Yeah. They were like, we have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> um, so, but it was cool. Like that whole, that whole experience. So then, you know, dancer is, dancer is that even more so like it's, I, you know, I was, I had the opportunity to, I was anonymous, but because I was singing and doing all of that, you're still a little self-conscious of that because you know, once you take off the the mask that everyone's going to look back and go, okay, well, how was he singing? And how, like, there's that connection. You're going to be judged by it. Um, I feel like dancer is so much more anonymous. Like if somebody said, all you have to do is show up in a co- in like a costume and dance and do choreography. You you just get to the point where you completely let go because you have you you have no insecurities at all. Like you just get to act like an to, asshole for to be clear you know, for an hour. You're saying this because you're a good dancer because I think a lot of fucking people would be very insecure about dancing. No, I know I would. would no, you be? if I had a mask well, on, I'd be so like that, Frankenstein and Big Daddy. Rip, yeah. just, let's go, baby. You can't see, but yeah, that yeah. but. But think about it though, like on Halloween when you put on yeah, a costume, right, right. you have tons of fun. Yeah. Because you're like, I have a costume on. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, and you even even these ridiculous costumes that you buy at like costume shops that are like, hey, we're a ham and cheese sandwich, you know, right, and I'm with somebody right. else or <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. mustard and you know, he's yeah. ketchup. Like that's you you act like um like an idiot because nobody knows it's you. They've right. got this little cutout of your face. So it's the same kind of thing, like to when we were when we were on the panel on on, uh, on dancer and we're trying to figure out who's in the costumes, you know, you've got even though I'm confident as a dancer, I'm not a dancer per se. Like I'm not I'm not used to being in like dance productions and right. being you know and having choreography done and all of that. Like I I enjoy dancing, but you watch people and you go, okay, that's right away dancer. you know yeah. that's a trained dancer. Right. That's that's somebody that's a gymnast. That's somebody that's an ice skater. That's somebody that's physically fit. That's somebody that's older and not like, this is the first time they've done it. And they're, so you start, you start narrowing down the field based on that. Like at first I thought in my head, like, Oh, it's going to be really hard figuring out who's in a costume based on just dancing. But you actually can learn a lot by that. Like when you're, when you're forced to just focus on that, there's a lot of information that can come from that. And there's, and they like, we have this one thing on the show called uh, word up mm-hmm. where the contestant each episode, they give us a word in the microphone. We don't alter their voice at all. So, and they say a word that's sort of a clue based on their lives. So if you, if you are really sort of, um, leaning in one direction towards, I think it's this person, then all of a sudden you hear him speak. And it's obviously not that person's voice. Like, yeah, you know, you could think it's Mike Tyson the whole time, and then you hear this dude <laughs> yeah, talk with a bassy yeah. voice, and you go, "Okay, yeah. that's not Mike Tyson." Right. That right. All of a sudden, it, you have to rethink what you know. And they and they their their word is Grammy. You're like, okay, okay. well now, now know, right away yeah. it's somebody with a deep voice that's what that's either performed on the Grammys, has won a Grammy, has, like has yeah. some connection with Grammys. There's an art form to it, huh? Yeah, it's sudden, like you're playing adult that, blue. Yeah, it's like it's yeah, like adult it's guess who. Really, yeah, guess who. Yeah, it's really fun and and to be to be a panelist, much like an audience member, the the clue packages really uh, they really mean a lot and they're really well thought out on this show. Like we as a panel, we did a lot better on this uh, in this first season than we thought we would. We thought it would be a lot harder than it ended up being because it it changes the way you think the way you see things you know it, this it's is some like deep once shit, man. <laughs> this is deeper than yeah, i ever thought once, the mass dancer would once go you, once you learn like what to look for and and what things mean a lot you can start watching clue packages and like it's sort of like if you're putting a, a fantasy sports team together and you know, like, okay, these are stats, but these are things that I look for. This dude is a really good runner aside from like what his stats are. So, uh, you know, I want that or I want, so when you start looking for those things with, with like, you, you have a finely tuned eye for it, then those little things really make sense. And I would start seeing people and go, okay, that's footwork that reminds me more of somebody that is from this line of work than right. this line of work. 
Damn, and he, man. And then you start getting excited. Yeah, it gets really fun. And, and I people, hope you get like a bonus if you get it right, because you are like, you're like Belichick out here, like studying tape well, and shit. Dude. So, so that's, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the thing though, that, that gets really, that got really fun about the show was figuring out like, what is your lane and what isn't like, you know, when, when somebody, when their clues kept leaning and talking about or referencing TikTok, I was like, I don't even understand TikTok. Jake so, Paul. <laughs> but, but Ashley Tisdale, that's her lane. Like, right. That's, you know, go for it, Ashley. Like, I, I'm going to follow whoever you think it is. But this is somebody that, this is in my lane. This is like, this is somebody in music or this is somebody that's, you know, in sports, in, in, in the way that like I see that, like, yeah. I, I really think that it's this person. And, and so people would follow, so we would follow each other. So it wasn't because you don't win anything. You're not like, oh, I guess the most people. So right. I win a thing also. It's just like you feel you cool together. because you did. Yeah, 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 right. So, so there's, no, there, there's no ego really in that. I mean, you kind of feel like a moron if you don't guess one and everybody else has. <laughs> Because you, know, you feel like I really suck at this yeah. game. Yeah, Brian, I um, went my whole school career being the guy who did not work on the group project. So I'd be just fine <laughs> not contributing. <laughs> you guys do the work. Yeah, like, you guys nailed it. Great yeah. work. My check still cleared. Right, Beautiful. Yeah. Whatever. All good. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I got a question. You keep the anonymity seems to be like a pretty uh, important aspect here, and you mentioned it earlier how you kind of lost yours. What's the craziest thing you've done to like kind of stay anonymous? And I asked that because when you mentioned how you lost your anonymity, it reminded me of Theo Epstein, the old Red Sox GM. And what he yeah. used to do was he would, when he realized that a couple or a family didn't recognize him in the street, he would just follow them home. <laughs> <laughs> and, he would, really? and he would just hang out outside their house because he was like, at least these people don't know me. And it feels good to be not known. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking lunatic. That's ridiculous. He's an absolute yeah. lunatic. So, so you ever follow any children home, Brian? <laughs> yeah. Even if I did, I don't know if I would talk about it. I, um, I don't know. Anonymity. Are you, are you ever in like, 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 like he's, he's also left Fenway Park in a gorilla suit. Like yeah. he just had like a, I mean, he was the mass, he was the mass, he was the mass GM. GM. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he just walked out in a grill, just walked out amongst the people to get to his I would car. assume, I would assume a really cool job to have at, at, at a stadium is a mascot. Like that's got to be really fun. No like, way, just, dude. What are you nuts? <laughs> just hyping up the crowd and then like stamina comes into play again here. It's a running it's theme in my life, Brian. Yeah, but I, would I don't love, have the energy for that. When they're doing <laughs> the t shirt gun and shit, I would love that. And how I don't many? Need, yeah. I don't need the dancing, but just the, the blasting people. All right, the t-shirt gun, fine. That's a fun five minutes. Yeah. The rest of the time, you're taking pictures, <laughs> right. and it's either fucking drunk dudes jokingly molesting you, <laughs> or like little kids fucking pulling at your dick. Like, there's nothing fun happening here. Like, people just grabbing at things. People, people treat you. That's why I, I was actually thinking while you were explaining how everyone just referred to you as draft. draft. I'd have like an identity crisis. I'd be like, I'm a man. My name's Brian. Stop. I've earned this. <laughs> that was that was one of the funniest things when I went back to do um, to do dancer was because it's majority of the same crew that does singer that that they kept for dancer. It's the same stage and everything. So a lot of people referred to me as giraffe when I first got there and I would get in people's faces and be like, I'm a person. <laughs> My name is Brian. Not anymore. You know it's me. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. Funny. Yeah. Stop calling me giraffe. <laughs> like, all right, pull out my wrestling tank, voice, tank the my fucking monster show, truck voice. Like people being rude to you. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna play a little uh, answer the internet here with you. We got hypothetical questions from our show over the years. Oh boy! And the deep okay. dark corners of the internet. Some philosophical, oh, some all the burning fun. questions. Yeah, yeah. All, all the important yeah. stuff here. We'll start off. Cool. We'll start off easy. Would you rather all be right. half your height or double your weight? You asked me ridiculous questions like this yep. last time. Yeah, this is what we do <laughs> yeah. here. This is yeah, what we do right. here. Um, so, so you're talking uh, what? Like how tall are you? Double my weight. Are you like six probably feet? Probably double. Probably double my weight because it could be you didn't specify fat or muscle. Oh, if you, loophole, if you go half your height, 
you're kind of stuck, but I could be just writ like yoked and be double my weight. Dude, yeah, if you totally. put on your weight now in muscle, you'd be a freak. <laughs> you would you'd be, be a You'd freak. be Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, you would have to be like The Rock. Right, yeah. and and again, so what's bad about that? Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So right. name the negative in that, <laughs> right. Um, okay. Whereas if I was if I was Emmanuel Lewis, I might not have the career that I have. <laughs> um, would you rather go 50 years in the future or 50 years in the past? Fifty years in the past is what? Fifty years in the past. Ninety-six. I know it's not that much anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, right. Nineteen. Yeah, fifteen years in the past because I've been there. <laughs> fifteen years in the future scares the crap out of me. Oh, oh no! First of all, it's fifty five five zero five zero. Yeah, five zero five zero. Yeah. Oh, so we're talking ni- nineteen seventy versus uh, two thousand. Yeah, I'd still go in the past because I was born in seventy three. So you just get to live life again. Yeah, you just get right, to double yeah. it up. Yeah. Would you do anything? But, but I get to start life? life. But I get to start life now at this point where I'm not like retarded and learning everything. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Yeah, 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 yeah. all that, yeah, yeah. all that, yeah. that knowledge. Yeah, so you do that rather than just go get to see what happens in uh, in the future. Mm-hmm. I, I have no interest in finding out what happens in the future. I mean, it keeps Dude, getting worse. All, all I know is like, you know, Elon Musk is talking about us living on Mars. I don't want to fucking live on Mars. No, <laughs> that was a question for around here. I don't want to live in tunnels Would like you, under red sand. If if they make commercial travel to space possible, let's say it's, you know, n- not, I'm not going. No, I don't want to. I don't think I would go no. either. I don't even like flying. I'm not. I don't need the. I'm, like, I'm terrified <laughs> of space, man. Have the- you seen Have you seen the movie like Gravity? And the, uh, that space terrifies me. Yeah, that I, whole I, like. Weightless thing and and silent. No thanks. Yeah, the I'm silence good. would be weird. I agree. Yeah, that, that I'm I, good. I, I love it. I love the movies. I love to think about it and talk about it. I don't need to go there. Oh, see, I, right, I think totally. I, that's that's the beauty of the movies. Would you go? I, would you I'd, go, I'd go chill in like a space station. Oh yeah. Would you really? Oh, for sure. What would you do? Just for the experience. Like, I, I don't want to go on a mission for like a year and a half where my DNA comes back changed. Yeah. But the like, I'd go. Well, I'd go check I mean, it out. That's that's kind of part of the trip. <laughs> I was gonna say. You know, we don't. <laughs> I mean, get, you don't get to change. You've got to know like your DNA is going to be changed a little bit. Yeah. Well, that's fine. If, if, if anything, it can only get better. Like, you know, you know, you know, like, it's really, it's only going up. But the, I, I don't know. I, I just like to check it out to see, see what space is all about. I'm surprised. You uh, know, like, Kevin makes sense to me because Kevin doesn't like to travel much. Or anything, but like, I, you seem to me like a, a traveled man. Uh, totally, but traveled on this planet. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. Like, you, you've probably been everywhere on this planet. Why don't you check out Time what's not on another it? one? <laughs> I know. No, no. no. <laughs> you do it. You I tell also, me all about it, man. I, I, unless, when you say like, "What am I gonna do?" You're gonna plant a fucking Brian Austin Green flag on the moon. That's what you're gonna <laughs> okay. I wonder too, like, unless they really, unless Elon and company make it, you know, let's say somehow they make it really easy, because I'm sure astronauts hear these things and they're like. Oh yeah, like oh, it's just got to be pissed. Like it's you're just hopping on a flight to fucking Dallas. You have to right. like break through the atmosphere, <laughs> and you right. know you're shaking and sweating, and you know all yeah. that. It's not easy yeah. to be an astronaut, folks. Yeah, uh, can you can you imagine like being an astronaut during that time when it was ri- when it was super fucking risky to be doing it? The real OG, and like just man. to commercially be able to do it now, right. like oh yeah, we're you know. Did you buy your tickets to the moon? I did. Right, I'm right. I got days. it for my son for right. Christmas. Like, I, just I almost needed died. COVID test, that's all. Yeah, right. <laughs> I just need a negative COVID test, and I'm on the flight to the moon. <laughs> um, all right, can you can you still go to your barber if he's very racist? <laughs> 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 like, like the whole, like he's the best barber in the world. He your cuts hair looks every, perfect. He's super racist. Just the whole time he's complaining about Jewish people, <laughs> black people. He's like, we gotta take our country back. Just the most <laughs> vile America first shit you've ever heard. But when you walk out the door, you look awesome. You My look hair looks awesome. Beautiful, yes. flawless. <laughs> Everyone's like, wow, you got a haircut. You look amazing, dude. <laughs> Can you do it? <laughs> right. And you, you look it. awesome. Your DNA has changed. <laughs> um, you don't have to agree with the guy. I, I you mean, just gotta you can close your eyes. Like I mean, most of the time you're at the barber, they're saying just bullshit anyway. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. Most of the time you're just trying to ignore them. It's the same thing. No, you you no. can't go to that fucking barber. You gotta let that you gotta let that dream go, man. That's <laughs> Your your hair won't just. You have to face the fact your hair is not going to be as on point, but that, you can't. That's. I mean those, 
that's how you change things fundamentally, you know, is like by not going to that fucking barber, like until that barber has no clients and goes out of business. And then, oh, so you're saving okay, the world. that's one less waste. Yeah. You're changing, <laughs> yeah. you're changing society. I mean, you're, you're right. You're saving the you're, world one haircut, one, yeah. one haircut at a time. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, would you rather lose half your dick's length or half your dick's girth? <laughs> I swear to God, you asked me that dick question last time. I, I don't know. We got a lot of dick questions, Brian. <laughs> There's a lot of them, bro. Uh, uh, I mean, they, you know, next. girth matters. Girth next. matters. <laughs> All right. who's, who's you, know what, you know what I always heard, which I don't know if I don't know if I should admit it. Um, but I always heard it's not how deep you fish, it's how you wiggle the worm. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who's more badass, James Bond or Jason Bourne? Ooh. Jason Bourne? Yeah, that's the right answer. I think Easy. it depends yeah. on what you what you define as badass, though. Like James Bond, will, I mean, uh, Bourne will fuck you up in close quarters. Yeah, Jason Jason Bourne will, he'll just fucking like hand to hand murder. No you. doubt. But I'm saying if, if I were James to, Bond, like, has all the cool tricks and the cool stuff and all that. That's what I mean. But, like, badass to me but, also but can you're mean not, he, he walks in, a, he walks into the bar, he gets his martini, he's hitting on right? the girls, he looks smooth, he looks suave, he can yeah, control but the is room. He, but is he James Bond when he gets home by himself? When he walks yeah, back into his yeah. house? Right. How fucking cool is he? He's Jason Bourne is always Jason Bourne. But he's not cool. He can just fucking yeah, murder. But you. it's not cool. The question. The question but, that's fucking, but, that, cool. but that is kind of cool. It depends on what your what your uh, definition of cool exactly. Is. Right. Right. Yeah. You you can be. You know. You don't have to murder people to be <laughs> badass. Jeez. Uh, who would win well, in a you fight? Kind of do. Yeah. I, mean, I guess so. Right. Who would you know. win in a fight? Ten ten year olds or 100 100 year olds? <laughs> I would just love to see that fight. That yeah, would right? be, what, you know who wins? We do. I would have to view that all day yep, long. Me too, right? That's I'd watch like, that in a heartbeat. Yeah, that 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 was the fight. That was that's kind of like the fight that I heard about. Of you had there were like twenty little people and like ten lions. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Who doesn't want to see that fight? Yeah, that's, that's in here too somewhere. Who doesn't want to see 10 10 year olds and a hundred a hundred year olds? I'm taking uh, the hundred year olds, um, by the way. I, I, I think, think everyone always takes people. the ten year olds, and I'm, I'm taking the hundred. Ten year olds are not. I, but yeah, but but the the hundred year olds would be so easy to hurt. I mean, uh, like a ten year old could run at ten. Hundred year like olds bowling. and just like yeah. tap them in the knee, like just hit them in the knee, and it's like, oh my knee, you know. And then it's like, okay, there's ten down. All it takes, you need like one, like World War II vet who's like a hundred, and, and he's <laughs> right. still like, who's I like, killed I'm a bunch of these. Kill off all yes, you exactly. Little exactly. <laughs> just snapping necks and shit like that, you know. <laughs> all right, right. For, that 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 one hundred year old happened to be Rambo. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, like, you know, tying off, hiding in mud walls and shit. <laughs> one on his yeah. face. <laughs> right. <laughs> For $100,000, would you spend two days carrying around a human-looking robot and you had to introduce it to, introduce it to everybody as your girlfriend? Woo! I just, I swear, I swear I just read this story. Yeah. Have you... Have you seen the story of the dude that's going to marry Mar his, yeah. uh, his, his doll? His sex doll, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. We dove yeah. deep on that one yesterday. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be that guy for 100K just for two days? Just like, this is my girlfriend, Komiko. But you got to think for this guy. I mean, you know, like oh, for, the, for the famous people, oh, it's like man. TMZ and the celebrity outlets are all like, Brian Austin Green's got a new girlfriend. You know what, it's though? a doll. You know what? I would. I would because I would donate the hundred grand to oh, charity. Oh, so would, smart! That would Get out of that here. would be that it's would be ball. my my fucking way of still being awesome. That is a great loophole. That's, that's not a great loophole. That's a great that, loophole. You already have a hundred thousand dollars. Loophole. Yeah. Don't be jealous of the loophole that I found. You're just upset that you didn't find it. <laughs> well, if I'm gonna do it, I want to keep the money. I, it's not that I didn't think about charity. It's just I don't, don't want to give it to charity. <laughs> I just don't I, like I need the hundred thousand. I earned that hundred thousand. I'm keeping it. But there's, but there's no, but there's no loss if all you're doing is carrying around and introducing a robot as your girlfriend. And people know you're donating the money. There's no loss. Yeah. I, I carry, I carry like I carry a Starbucks cup out, you know, from Starbucks to my car. Like I, and I get nothing for it, but a cup of coffee. Like I, well, you're not fucking losing anything. 
Last one here. Uh, would you date your dream girl if for two days every week she had to dress like a juggalo? <laughs> And you get to pick which two days, which matters. And, and matters. You, you get to pick which juggalo. In sure, fact. sure. You get to pick her makeup and her outfit. Yeah. Can I? Can I be? Can I be out of town on those days, working? She could be you. Yeah, why not? That's what I mean. Oh, loophole lost yes. in green over here. Yeah, look at the loopholes that I'm finding. See how I'm doing this? Dude, I got a uh, I got a tweet the other day. You know how everyone's showing their their wrap up of the year, Spotify, all the Spotify music they listen to, and this one oh, guy yeah. he showed me his top five, and it like legitimately had jug ICP in there. Like people legitimately listen to the insane clown posse. I, to think, the juggalo music. I think it fucking is fucking insane. I think it's hmm. like a, I think it's pretty good rap is what people tell me. No, it's not. Sir. Have you ever listened? Yeah. Oh, okay then. I haven't. So I, I was going to yeah, really go to yeah, war for I don't, the I don't know if I ever have either. I, I, don't know I if mean, I, ever... I can't say I've like given their album a listen, but I've definitely heard some insane clown posse songs and I've been like, this sucks. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> But I guess if you're a juggalo, man, that juggalo life. I mean, so you're you're in on the juggalo. You just ditch her two days a week. You're like, see you, honey. Yeah, yeah. I just here. I just have to travel for work. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, we appreciate the time. Uh, so you, dude, it's so good seeing you guys. Yeah, again, dude. Man. Always a pleasure, man. Awesome. Hopefully, we get through this soon and we can do this stuff in person again. See that beautiful. Yeah, I know mug. this whole this whole Zoom thing is crazy, right? Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. I'm Same. over it. But yeah. uh, the novelty is totally worn off. Right. You can catch. Him on the mass dancer on Fox, and uh, we'll see you soon for the next project. All right, man. Take care, guys. Have Thanks, God. Catch you later. Peace, man. Listen, if you made it this far into the video, which is far, like no one ever does that on the internet. Like it's the end. You made it to the end the of the video. The full fucking video. You, you watched did. the whole thing. So if you liked it and you watched the whole thing, why don't you subscribe? It means you like us. Click the subscribe button because if you don't, I'm going to fucking murder John. And I'm going to like it. I'll kill him with my bare fucking hands. Yeah. And if you weren't sold on this video, there's plenty more. Watch what's next up, and then subscribe. But just subscribe, so I don't have to fucking kill him. Subs well, I don't know. Do what you want, but subscribe. Probably!